So it's uh, a little after a little after six, six oh four. Uh, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, and uh, we have the uh, first order of business on the agenda um, is to uh, do a discussion uh, to interview uh, applicants for the Development Review Board and uh, Ordinance Advisory Committee, uh, which is a uh, newly formed uh, committee or a committee that we're planning on uh, forming uh, this evening through the adoption of a resolution. Um, and I believe the only application that we have um, at the moment uh, uh, is for the uh, Ordinance Advisory Committee, uh, and that is Jan. Um, so I was going to start with uh, that conversation, um, and then we'll kind of work through a dialogue for the, for the rest of it. Does that sound appropriate for everyone? Great. Um, so uh, for context, uh, kind of more broadly, uh, uh, the, the plan and discussion uh, the select board has had around uh, forming uh, a special committee to help facilitate um, uh, the review, the kind of systematic review of ordinances um, uh, and kind of taking a structured, comprehensive approach to, to how we consider uh, making uh, changes to those ordinances. Um, and uh, right now, the uh, proposed structure for that would be uh, a pair of uh, standing members from the select board um, to cross-pollinate uh, between the board, uh, the select board and the ordinance advisory committee, um, as well as uh, Tegan, um, the, uh, uh, to bring some continuity between uh, ordinances and record keeping in the town, uh, and then also community members uh, with kind of an aptitude uh, and experience reviewing uh, ordinances. Um, and with that, <laughs> Jan, you've raised your hand as a community member interested in uh, participating in that conversation. Uh, so, so thank you. Um, I'd like to open up uh, the uh, floor to any questions from the board. Uh, Jan's volunteering was pretty straightforward. Uh, she has a <coughs> decorated history of serving in a number of roles for the uh, town um, and, and dealing with and considering town regulations. Are there any questions for Jan? Uh, Jan, could you just say a few words about what, what skills you bring to the committee? <laughs> I mean, most of us know you, so we already know, but why don't you just say something? Or <laughs> why should you like to be on the committee? Did I hear the question right? You want me to know what skills do I bring to this? Yeah, uh, because it requires somebody, you know, who thinks in a certain way, and I just wondered what you would have to say about that. Or just tell okay. us a little bit about your background. Um, historically background, I had to write specifications for coding, <laughs> for computer coders. <laughs> and the deal was, um, if you could write the directions for uh, tying your shoelaces on a shoe, and a person could read it and tie their shoe successfully, you were a good specification writer. <laughs> so my training, <laughs> early in my uh, career was that. Um, I guess, um, yeah, experience of writing bylaws, of um, ancient history of writing the old town plan. Um, and I think probably the really real reason that I um, put my hat in the ring was several years ago, uh, I was working on a contract for the reappraisal with uh, Nemeric. And I went out and I was looking at the financial um, ordinance or whatever we had, and it said that we still use QuickBooks. <laughs> and I thought, really? Um, so I just would like to get them corrected. Great. Thank you. And thanks for volunteering. <clears throat> Um, well, 
Uh, Jan, I've, I've had experience working with you and having conversations with you on a number of other, uh, number of other uh, committees. And, um, uh, and I think the, uh, the intention would be to have, uh, uh, I think, a committee of about seven. And you had expressed uh, concern about not having a, a board that is, or uh, yeah, a committee that is too, too large. Um, but I'd like to also, uh, I think, get this committee going um, as soon as possible. Um, did you have a thought about how many other community members would be appropriate to try to hold seats open for? Well, am I the only person that you actually put my hat in the ring? Uh, at the moment, yes. Okay, so there are some I, other there are some others who have expressed a, a, expressed an interest for sure. Um, I, I can think of it, uh, two others, uh, I believe, um, but uh, hadn't quite committed to raising a hand. Uh, okay. So um, we've been playing around with the idea of of making this a, a five five member committee. Right now we'd be at four, and that would leave another uh, another slot open uh, for a member. Uh, member of the public, and, and we also ha follow open uh, open meeting law, so quorum, um, we, if you want consensus great. and everything. So I, I you know, I, 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 our two select board members are going to be on the team. That is the that's how it's been uh, discussed. Yes, okay. they so, are two weeks left. So if you can get. Um, if you really want seven, then you have to get five other members. Mm -hmm. If you really want to get started, then maybe you have to start with five with the thing that will move to seven as people get interested. I don't know. Um, my only concern was sometimes reaching consensus with seven people can be difficult <laughs> um, and it might be easier with five, but that would be my only concern. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the other uh, thoughts that has come up was uh, to make the select board uh, position standing positions uh, that could uh, that could change with obviously uh, appropriate announcement relative to uh, the ordinances that are being considered so that if certain members of the select board uh, had a particular interest aptitude or experience uh, with a tranche of ordinances um, that they could volunteer their time for that uh, particular uh, uh, list of priorities. Um, uh, is that is that a concept or structure that others are, are comfortable with? I'm trying to be sensitive to uh, the scope of work that we all get ourselves involved in. Um, um, but also giving everyone an opportunity to participate in conversations where they can apply themselves the most. So you're suggesting that the person that coming on on certain issues would also be eligible to vote and would become part of the quorum requirement and everything? Or could that person just participate? Well, so the, the way that uh, the kind of charge for, um, for this uh, group or this committee has been discussed and structured is that um, uh, the priorities of, uh, of what's being considered and taken up by the uh, by the committee will come from the select board, um, and so I'm I guess foreseeing a fair amount of lead time on on what the list of priorities uh, or the list of ordinances that are being considered at any particular period of time um, will will surface through the select board. Um, so if there are select particular select board members that feel uh, passionate or have experience with a particular set of uh, ordinances that they'd be able to uh, take over those uh, that seat. Um, we would be able to move in and out uh, relative to the scope of work that we may have volunteered ourselves to do uh, on the select board. So Jerry? Would you then say that it's it's a revolving membership from the select board um, based on their the interest, and that's fine. I think um, I think that it is helpful, and it doesn't put any one select board member on having to do everything. You know, all of them. 
makes sense to me if you can have it be revolving as needed. Yeah, that, that, that's what I was trying to articulate. Uh, if, and so we can call it revolving or standing or whatever, however, however you want to describe that. Mm -hmm. but is there appeal, kind of consensus around the rest of this select board on that? Sure. Okay. Um, well, do we have, uh, are there any questions? Yeah, the only, I'm just thinking this through as we're here. The only question that comes up is that sort of eliminates the possibility of the committee working on multiple ordinances at the same time, which might be better efficiency wise for there to be sort of multiple tax happening at once, but maybe we wouldn't want that to happen anyway. I mean, I think, I, uh, again, my, from my perspective, um, because the priorities are going to be dictated uh, by the select board themselves, like itself, um, uh, if, if you're looking at a particular uh, tranche of, uh, of ordinances, it's because they're interrelated in one particular way by subject matter or, uh, um, or otherwise. So, um, yeah, so I, I, don't, I don't think that that would be too much of an issue if you're taking up a number of them. You would, um, you would be engaged for that particular uh, set of items and then um, relative to the next kind of collection of ordinances. Um, you know, the, the ordinances are statutorily always going to have to go through the select board in a very definitive process. So this is really just a, a matter of creating a working group that can take a structured approach uh, to um, uh, making revisions or creating continuity um, between ordinances uh, as they come up. But, you know, if there were if there were relatively simple changes or adjustments to ordinances, it wouldn't necessarily have to come through the advisory right. committee. The, right. the select board would always have the ability to take up um, uh, an edit like that. Um, but if there are more um, substantive changes or, um, or we want to try to afford, afford the, uh, the community opportunity to participate um, in, longer dialogue about a, a particular set of uh, ordinances that, that kind of give them a forum to do that yeah. before it goes up to the select board and uh, get to the you know, full select board agenda. Um, uh, so with that, uh, there was a draft resolution which uh, Tegan prepared. Um, as, uh, as recommended by BLTC um, as a best practice um, for forming a committee. And the resolution uh, defines, uh, defines the committee and its roles. Um, so that had been put into the folder uh, and has, has not been changed uh, substantively since the last one, but we wanted to give everybody the opportunity to have a look at that. Um, has everyone had the chance to review that? Mm -hmm. It was under the admin items. Yes. So um, one thing I'm wondering is if we could take out the part about where we specify the numbers and uh, there were some other things, uh, the dates and, and things, and just leave it open for the committee to, to be more fluid. So establish the committee and let the committee decide? Yeah, um, I can't find I think we need to have an effective date. Or, or maybe yeah. say, consist of no fewer than five and no more than seven. Something like that. Something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know about alternates. Yeah. It was just sort of boilerplate language. I didn't know what you all wanted to do with it. If you wanted to put it, if you wanted to not put it, it was just some, some recommended structure. So we can say there's established for the town of Calus effective today's date an ordinance advisory committee which shall consist of at least five and no more than seven members Ooh, you're changing us mm -hmm. <laughs> yikes <laughs> um, 
I don't think the select board has to say if there's going to be alternates or not. Maybe the committee can. What do you think? Yeah, I'd just take that out. Um, just for the purpose, members for the purpose. Alternate members for an advisory committee, do we? No. <clears throat> no, I actually don't think you want them. Yeah. You want the same people talking about it. I think so. Unless we had two primary select board members on the committee and the rest of the select board were alternates mm -hmm. as a mechanism for having that revolving door. Uh, does it say, <coughs> this resolution doesn't say that they're permanent members. Yeah. That they are who the members are, like that right. there are two select board members. Do we have to say that in the so resolution? No, can't we right. just say that once we appoint the committee? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Barbara. Um, <clears throat> since since we're at least two people short of a committee of five, and you're wanting to go and set it up, maybe you don't want to have a minimum of five, because if you don't have five, does that mean it's a non-functioning group? So maybe you want to say a, a window of three to seven, with an ideal of hitting five. We're only one short of five if. We have accepted Jan to the committee, correct? That would make it four. Four. Mm -hmm. Assuming we have two select board members. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm fine with calling it at least three and no more than seven. I'm yeah. fine with that. Then too. we could at least get started. Yeah. It, yeah. it doesn't really change the obligation for quorum, just. Yep. Um, and we want to leave. I mean, we can modify this at, a, at, at any point if we uh, need to get more specific. Mm -hmm. um, is everybody comfortable with that as it's currently modified? Yep. Do we want to take out at least on a monthly basis only because there may be times a year from now when we don't have any ordinances they're working I, on? I, yeah, I would suggest taking that out. It will hold its meetings publicly to conduct the business report. Yeah. Yes, because the select board is going to tell the committee when it needs to meet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and what will the effective date be when we vote to mm -hmm. on the resolution? Okay. Uh, yep, so uh, if, if we can adopt the resolution uh, tonight, um, I would uh, then uh, propose that we um, entertain a motion for uh, putting uh, the first slate of candidates on there. Um, do you need a motion first to adopt the resolution? I think you do. I think that would okay, be appropriate. I that we adopt the resolution as currently written with today as the effective as date. As currently revised, right? As currently, well, <laughs> as revised tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, with today as the effective date. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you, everyone. And thank you, Tegan, for the, uh, for the resolution. Um, uh, and then um, I would uh, make the motion uh, to uh, uh, nominate uh, or appoint Jan uh, Olson to, uh, to the board as a community member uh, who's expressed an interest in joining, um, and also Tegan, um, uh, as well as uh, Bill and Christy. <laughs> Hey, I'll second that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, did you hear that? There's a real going on through here. Newbies, <laughs> newbies. <laughs> All right, how, how about just Tegan and Jan, and then we can have a conversation. <laughs> we'll do Tegan and Jan first. Oh, okay. I tried. You did? I'll, I'll accept I saw that, that friendly <laughs> amendment. Um, I think Jan has a hand up. Uh, Jan, did you have a hand up? Yeah, I did. Um, I guess the question would be, uh, eventually, who's going to who's going to head the committee and call the meetings? Is it is it going to be one of the select board or Tegan? 
Uh, that, that would be uh, that would be up for the committee. I, you know, I, I don't think that the select board needs to uh, be involved in dictating uh, how uh, how the committee organizes itself. Uh, so uh, there would be a charge from the select board to uh, to organize and uh, adopt some uh, rules and procedures. Um, uh, that are in line with the, uh, the rules and procedures of other committees within the town. Uh, okay. But yeah, the, the committee would self self organize. Okay. Thanks. So is there a motion? Uh, so there's a motion to appoint uh, Tegan and Jan uh, for the initial Okay, I'll slate. second that motion. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Congratulations. Congratulations and thank you. And now for the meat of it, for the select board uh, members. Um, I would volunteer to be on the committee. Okay, thank you, Bill. I don't, I haven't been able to track down the list that we put out of prioritized oh, ordinances. It's, it's, but there. it's the Curtis Pond. I would definitely be interested in at least some of the like the two Curtis Pond ones and I think there was one other on the list that I had to uh, but I can't. dog ordinance use of town highway right of way ordinance right. those were the uh, yeah so the use of town right of way and uh, road uh, or, uh, road related ordinances uh, were going to be in the second tranche so uh, there had been some uh, uh, and because they're a little bit meatier, but there had been some outstanding requests from the community to uh, to take a look at the Curtis Pond uh, right. related yeah, ordinances. Yeah. So we were, and, and the, um, uh, the dog ordinance. Um, so we were kind of hoping that that would be uh, a warm up lap, so to speak, uh, for the committee and hopefully they'd be able to work through um, those in relatively short order. Um, uh, and then the roads uh, would, would quickly follow after that. I'd be willing to at least launch off on it. <laughs> on the Curtis Pond. And probably into roads and, yeah, unless somebody else is chomping at the bed. <laughs> All are welcome to attend. <laughs> right, I don't have a preference if I'm on it, but I would probably attend and participate at least with the Curtis so I have an open meetings law question. So if this is an open meeting law requirement, if there are, let, let's just say it was Bill <coughs> and Christy who were the appointed select board members. If a third select board member, such as Jamie or Ann or Jordan, wanted to attend, would it have, and there's three select board members, would it have to be warned as a select board meeting, or can they just attend as a community member at an open meeting? They would have to be attending as a community member. But, and so if they attended as a community member, it, it doesn't have to be warned as a select board meeting because you've got three members there. Right, as long as we're not directly making decisions on behalf of the select board. Like three of us could attend a Anything. A anything, uh, you know. Okay. Planning commission. Board of civil authority. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But it, it's, it's a good clarifying question, and you know, yeah. and I, I can run that by the town's attorney just to make sure. But um, I, we've raised that question um, if uh, multiple select board members uh, attended other committee meetings, um, and and really, it's it's relative to conducting the work of the select board. Um, so as long as uh, work or business of the select board isn't discussed, um, this is uh, this is an interesting one because uh, it's ordinances and it would be future business of the uh, yeah. for the select board. Yeah. So we may need to be a little more careful about that. But um, uh, but yeah. it is it is intended to be a public forum. And so uh, and and they're not going to be they they can't pass ordinances. Uh, that all has to be driven through the select board. And so my guess is that that's probably where we're going to see a, a, a path through that. But in relation to Barbara's question, I thought at one time um, there had to be care if you were going to be an email and if there were three, if, if you have five select board members, if three people are having a conversation on an email, wasn't that considered public? 
Yes. Yeah, you're uh, discussing select board business. Yeah, I mean that would be true for any for any committee uh, discussing the businesses of the committees. Um, uh, so that. I don't know that that changes much. You but it's just it's a hairy question. It's a valid question. It is for sure. Um, Yes. So you're, are you going to talk to the attorney? Then? I will. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's my recommendation because I know when I was on the select board, um, they said even if you're at a party and you know yeah. four members of the select board are going to be there, you just can't do that. You don't know what they're going to talk about. You don't intend to talk about the business right. of the town. So you that's my recommendation. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And, yeah. And it's really an appearance thing. It, yeah. it, you know, so so legally, it, 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 that's. Um, so it's not prohibited, but it's, uh, it's yeah. an appearance issue. Maybe the yeah. committee should have a single select board member and a rotating select board seat. So there's two people total, sure. not three. That makes sense. So Billy will be a sitting one? Oh, yes. <laughs> and Jamie, you're going to be the first rotating one? Okay. Is that right? Um, I'm okay with you. Yes, it's okay with me. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'd make the motion to uh, appoint uh, Bill as uh, as the initial standing uh, member of the select board uh, to the committee, uh, with Jamie uh, uh, taking on uh, the first rotating role uh, after the set first set of uh, ordinance review. Uh, a second to that motion? Second. Uh, any questions? Further questions? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And aye. Any opposed? Great. That is the Ordinance Committee. One yes, last question. Do you want any more publicity to try to recruit any additional members or wait a month or so? Before we do that again, no, I think uh, I think we should continue uh, to solicit some input and um, and and try to get some other folks from the committee uh, or from the public comment. And do you want the very same posting that's already been there, or do you want this committee to have a chance to rewrite it? Mm, that's a great question. Uh, I, I, does anybody feel strongly about rewriting it? I mean, I think the scope of the work is uh, is about the same uh, relative to what was just written. Add a sentence that we need one more person for the committee. Yep. Yeah. The committee Something is like now that. formed, and we're looking for an additional member. Okay. All right. Thank you. But you would like us to get started. Yes. Yes. Please. For who, who's going to call that first meeting? I will make a poll thing to figure out when we can all. Meet. Thank you, Tegan. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, so the next uh, agenda item, oh boy, this is a not voting well for the, <laughs> for the agenda, um, is uh, considering applications for, uh, for the DRB, uh, which uh, we uh, had not received uh, any, um, is that correct, Kari? And, uh, that is okay. correct. And I see, uh, Willa, you're, um, you're online. <clears throat> Oh, might be muted. It looks like the muting came off, but. Is it a microphone issue? Might be a microphone issue. Um, well, so I, I don't think, well, certainly not being able to hear Willa would be, <laughs> wouldn't be appropriate to have. Uh, uh, any any kind of further discussion <laughs> about the DRB, it would be good to continue to solicit um, uh, folks for uh, for the DRB, um, and we'll try to give that another another go. Um, and uh, if we still struggle to get volunteers, uh, we'll schedule a time uh, to uh, connect with uh, with Willa. Uh, about how to how to proceed and then how to uh, make arrangements for the trainings and some of the other things that um, uh, that we discussed doing for the for the existing uh, DRP members. Sorry about the technical difficulty there, Willa. But but thanks for hanging in there. <laughs> uh, 
Um, all right, thanks. Um, so moving through the uh, agenda to the administrative uh, actions, uh, uh, at this point I'll, I'll take uh, any requests for additions or changes to, uh, to the agenda. Any, no? All right. Um, so then there's the approving of minutes uh, from September 23rd and October 7th. Uh, can I entertain a motion to accept those two sets of minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Together or separate? Uh, I've requested that it be uh, together, but we can take them second and I was at, separately. I was at one and not the other, so I would abstain from it. They're both uh, Let's separate. take them separately then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Bill, a little amendment there um, to your motion uh, to accept uh, the September 23rd minutes. Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. I, I abstain. Thank you. And uh, motion to accept the October 7th minutes, uh, which was last week's uh, special meeting. Uh, can I get a motion to accept those? I'll move them. Second. Uh, any further questions or changes? No. It was Anne. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Uh, vote to approve the board orders, which were circulated by Kari with a couple of additions. Uh, right. There's seven in total. Yeah. Um, were there any questions about the board orders? We'll have 1.3 million in the checking account after these clear. Oh, I actually had one question. I, the $1,000 to, 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 to Haya Weston, was she doing work for the town? Um, it was a repair to a driveway on Singleton Road that was damaged by our FEMA contractors. Oh, you contracted with the Westons to do it. Uh, well, we just, a year ago, when, right when I started, um, after consulting with Toby, because we'd already submitted the paperwork, we said, we'll take care of it. We've asked Hutchins, the uh, contractor, to pay for it, or at least a portion of it. They haven't responded yet, but um, we have a long-standing promise to yeah, go ahead and get this taken care of, and yeah. yeah, we'll figure it out. Okay. It's too late to have FEMA pay for it because they've already completed that project. And they're still out of money, is that? FEMA? Yeah. Uh, the money is not flowing at this time. <laughs> That's all okay. I can say. Yes. Um, uh, so, uh, can I uh, get a motion uh, to uh, accept the board orders uh, as they've been um, uh, presented? So uh, second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And uh, the adoption of the Social Services uh, Appointment Committee Resolution. Yes, there it is. Um, so this was uh, uh, prepared by Anne uh, through some the last round of kind of conversation about committee uh, formation. This would be a committee that uh, is uh, formed to review the social services portion uh, of the uh, town plan, uh, or not the town plan, um, uh, the budget um, as it uh, gets prepared for town meeting. Um, has everybody had a chance to review review that? Mm -hmm. The only question is the number. There's just several. <laughs> it's not a, not, a, not a number. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to put a number in because I had no idea how no, many would apply. Have you looked for anybody yet, Barbara? Have we, why? I can't remember whether you've advertised yet for anybody to do it. We don't no, advertise not. for it. It's It's been on the website since last town meeting, so we've gotten six applications so oh, far. Have. Oh, we have. Uh -huh. you, oh, you know, you're, you're referring yeah. to the committee membership, yeah, the committee not member. the actual uh, oh, yes. Yes. But, yes. No, we haven't advertised for it at all. No. You have okay. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, I just have no idea yeah. how many would apply, so I just thought I'd just say several. And then if nobody applies, I suppose we could decide to appoint Barbara and a select board member. <laughs> and I'm just leaving it as fluid as possible. Pardon? Oh, yep, Charlie. My understanding is that that is an ad hoc committee and not a standing committee. Mm -hmm. 
So I think that that gives you a lot more flexibility. It will be annually an ad hoc committee. Yeah. So where does that leave us with appointments then? We're going to have to appoint them? Well, we still have to solicit volunteers to mm -hmm. find interested people, right? So should uh, we modify the language uh, to be the similar to the three to seven? I think several is okay. Okay. The select board will solicit volunteers and choose several residents to read the applications for donations and make recommendations. Why don't you just drop the word several and just say yes. to choose residents? Yeah. Good yeah. idea. <laughs> Qualified, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so where is that? Uh, who else is in there? Everyone. Great. It's um, the first result. Just take out several on um, the first line there. Can gotcha. I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there, somebody's doing it. Does Kari know that he, uh, or a, his Kari. designee, is doing all this stuff? <laughs> what was it? The town administrator or designee shall select, shall collect all applications, yeah. organize a meeting. Yeah. yeah, I thought there was, Kari would probably at this point delegate to Barbara, who's done this plenty of times, <laughs> but it was leaving, who knows, in the future it might make right. sense okay. for somebody else to do it. Right. Okay. So, uh, with that slight modification, uh, I entertain a motion to um, uh, adopt this resolution uh, for the social services uh, advisory group. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, so, with that, I guess, Barbara, can you uh, put out an advertisement for anybody who'd be interested in serving in that okay. capacity? Thank you very much. And uh, ordinance advisory committee resolution has been adopted. Uh, appointing Holly West to the Trails Committee. Uh, yes? Yeah, I can speak to that. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tom Blatchley. I'm the chair of the Trails Committee. And uh, we've been uh, one member shy for a few months now. And we have a candidate, Holly Weiss. And I've met with her, and I think she'd be a great addition to the committee. Uh, we haven't had a formal meeting to introduce her to the committee members, but there's no requirement that that happens. Um, I have talked to them individually and about everyone, but there's <coughs> no objections. Um, and I think she'd be a great addition. Uh, she, for one thing, she's a woman, and we're very, uh, <laughs> we're very male dominated on the committee right now. And she also is from the eastern part of town, which is really helpful because almost everyone is from the western part of town. So that would it'd be, ni be nice to have some geographic diversity, if you will. And um, I, I think, I, you know, just from talking to her, she has a lot of enthusiasm and energy, and I think she bring a lot to the committee. So I would recommend her appointment. All right. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. Um, Holly, would you like to add anything? Or? <laughs> Um, no, but I'll say hi, I'm Holly, um, and uh, it would just be an opportunity to help participate and be a part of the community, and uh, I have four young children, so I'm hoping it can help bring them into the community fold as well, something they can participate in, too, so that's really all I have to add. <laughs> Great, thank you. Are there yeah. any other uh, questions for, for Holly? No, I entertain a motion to uh, uh, to appoint Holly uh, to the Trails Committee uh, for to uh, for the I guess the, the vacant seat. Um, is there a term on that particular seat, Barbara? I didn't think to. Oh, oh wait, I can answer that question. Just one moment. <laughs> Bert, Tom, do you know? Yeah, thank you. It's jeez. Oh, Is three your turn or two your turn? One or the other. <laughs> yeah. Seven yes. or eight yes. year term. Light by the way. She's got four years. Callous trails.
Committee and the Supreme Court of the United States. <laughs> Same operator. 2027. Okay, thank you. So for the, to the vacancy uh, serving through 2027. Are you willing to do that, Helen? Yes. Okay. So moved. No second. second. Great. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you very much and congratulations. Thanks, Holly. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> the lifetime appointment. <laughs> um, so uh, we. Oh. Excuse me, I was busy. Who made the motion? Uh, uh, Anne made the motion and Thank you. Jamie seconded. Thank you. And unanimous approval. <laughs> Uh, so uh, we, as usual, have a, a period of public uh, comment uh, for 15 minutes that gets divided equally by those who want to uh, uh, to offer comment on uh, items that aren't already on the agenda. So if you're going to participate in, uh, in something else that's on the agenda already, I'd ask that you hold off for that. Um, but are there any other uh, public comments that to register? Chris is the only one, so technically you've got 15 minutes, Chris, but if I could politely <laughs> take into considera uh, consideration that we're running pretty behind schedule. Um, otherwise, the floor is yours. No, no worries. Uh, I just wanted to give a shout out to Kari for uh, posting a road update on a front page form. Uh, really appreciated that. I know we had talked about it um, a few weeks ago, and it happened, and I'm looking forward to more. So that's all. Great. Thank you, Chris. Here, here. Thanks. Yeah. Actually, I raised my hand. Yep. Oh, sorry. That's okay. I have, I have two things. One on behalf of Dot Elling, mm -hmm. or actually two things on behalf of Dot Elling, unless uh, Chris wants to address them, and one for myself. So one, uh, Dot Elling wants to thank the road crew for addressing the Martin Road. Uh, she thinks that the repairs of the street could still use some fill along the edges and some kind of caution signage. It's still a close encounter when someone's not paying attention and or speeding and resting the hill. Plus, it remains a narrow spot. Okay. She did want to acknowledge the road crew's work on Martin Road. The second thing from that is um, that she is concerned that we have an issue in Adamant about speeding and parking. Oh, oh I'm sorry. That's going to be addressed later. The second one from Dot is that she would like the select board to encourage folks to possibly do some fall green up. The trash, it, trash is showing now, but won't be for long as it gets covered up by more leaves and snow. But picking it up now really helps minimize all that the trash that will show up in uh, the spring and get a head jump on May green up. So she'd like the select board to consider supporting a fall green up. And then I have one thing for myself, which is um, for those of you who are not aware at last week's VLCT town fair, VLCT awarded the Vermont Municipal Service Award to all the municipal road crews in the state of Vermont for all the work they did in repairing flood damage this past year. So we have a little certificate for our road crew. And so I wanted to see if any select board members would like to get together to present this at the garage to the road crew, or just have Kari do it on your behalf. But I wanted to give you this opportunity. Well, that's a fair question. <laughs> um, I mean, I feel like it could be good to entertain a, a group get together of some sort uh, to present that. So. Um, However, that works. You want to try to coordinate that? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thanks, Barbara. Yeah. Thank you, Barbara. Um, and with that, I think uh, wrapping the public comment. Um, Oh, we're almost back on schedule. <laughs> um, so we have a uh, issue to take up uh, relative to the roadside Boeing um, and uh, concern about conflict of uh, interest. And this was raised by uh, by Craig um, in uh, relation to the uh, roadside maintenance uh, application. I'm assuming that um, that we approved uh, earlier this year, yeah. and then uh, yeah. and then it. 
uh, and then an incident that uh, uh, that occurred uh, toward the end of this mowing season. Um, so uh, I have uh, spoken to uh, Kari about this and, and Bill, so I'm, I'm apprised of it, but um, I'm not sure that others on the select board uh, have been. So uh, Kari, I think you had uh, uh, looked into this and spoke to both Bill and, and Craig. Um, I did. Yeah, um, I put a little summary in my memo. Yeah. Just you know, from my perspective, I spoke to both of them immediately after it happened. Um, and you know, there's there's a couple issues here at least. And um, in terms of the initial encounter, you know, when Craig expressed that he felt threatened, that that was a a flag for me to, to investigate. So I did go back to Bill. I'd already spoken with Bill, but I went back and got his account. The very different accounts of how it, how it had played out. And I guess I'll just say in summary, it's, it's really unfortunate. I don't feel like the substance of the disagreement here, the underlying issue, is is all or you know, not that far apart. And I think that, you know, net, the thing I take from this is next year let's be a lot more clear about the standard that we are uh, intending for roadside mowing or private maintenance and, and all citizens when it comes to what, what is it going to be, um, what, what, is, what is the town expecting in terms of roadside mowing. Um, but obviously there's a couple issues I think we should let yeah, speak. Yes, absolutely. Um, and so Craig, if you could, I, I'd ask that um, uh, I'd like to um, kind of consider this, uh, a, a two-part uh, conversation. One, one addressing uh, the uh, conflict and uh, your feeling of uh, uh, being um, threatened or just uh, you know conduct that wasn't uh, appropriate. And speaking to that, but then uh, if you'd like to speak to the conflict of interest element, it'd be helpful to I think. Uh, take those under separate consideration and just try to separate those two things because, um, you know, I, I think it's uh, important to note that everybody in the community should um, uh, should feel safe and feel like they can raise these uh, issues in, in a kind of in a safe manner, uh, but also in, you know, a, a, a tempered and uh, respectful manner. Um, uh, so it'd be helpful to, I think, start there um, and then talk about uh, your concerns about conflict of interest and, and, uh, and miscommunicate opportunities for miscommunication. Uh, does that make sense? It does. I, I prepared it that way. Okay, thank you. I'm going to sit up here. Sure. So... Do I understand that the other three of you have not been apprised of this prior to tonight? Uh, we read the We have. Yeah. There was the, the, the a email okay. exchange. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I had emailed Kari a number of times. He asked if I wanted those to be shared with you all. And I said, yeah, I think so. And he said, okay, that's good. Because I think, I just want to understand what the baseline is. Um, I, I would appreciate it if I could get through this without questions or being interrupted. I'm, I'm happy to talk about any aspect of it. It's not my fault that you're 20 minutes behind schedule. As you glance at the clock, I'm joking. No, I'm, I, I yeah. got that. So um, this is really difficult. Um, and, and it was all really unnecessary. A simple phone call from Bill would have avoided all of it. Kari did that the week before. He called me and said, um, Bill has an issue with some of the trees on your road, on your property. And I said, show me the trees. And he came out the next day and we looked at things, we talked about it. and. I said at that time, I'm happy to talk to Bill about this if he has issues. Um, and Kari's response was, as I remember it, not sure if he'll want to do that or not. And so uh, that was on the final Tuesday of September. So 
Then on Monday, uh, September 30th, I was out at my sugar house in the morning, and I heard what I was pretty sure was the tractor and the mower mowing limbs along my road. So I hustled out to the road, and Bill was coming along on the tractor. And I walked directly toward him on my side of the road. He was going slowly. The mower was up and whirring, and I just let him drive toward me. I, at one point, put up my hand. I yelled, stop. I had done something similar in June when Steve was on the tractor, because I wanted to talk to him. He was not actually mowing at that time, but he just stopped. He turned it off. He opened the door. He said, how can I help you? And when I asked, and, and so Bill approached within three feet of me. And there was a moment, as I stayed in these emails, where I really did not know if he was going to stop or not. And, and, and he did. He threw up his hands as if to say, what the hell? What are you doing? I walked around to the door of the tractor, and he opened it, and I said, could you turn that off, please? He said, why? I said, I can't hear you. And he said, I can hear you. I said, I can't hear you. Please turn it off. He turned off the mower, but not the tractor. So this mower, as you probably know, it's vertical. It's got whirring blades, which are facing away from the road, but it's loud and it's, it, it's, a, it's a nasty thing when you think you're at risk. Um, so that's, that's the setting, what precipitated all this. And I'll just say that I really don't need this. I don't need the stress. And for days, I couldn't stop thinking about that moment where I really didn't know if he was going to stop or not. And I described that to Kari, and he said, it really should never have gotten to the point where you felt fear for your safety. And, and that's my main point, too. His actions were dangerous, they were disrespectful, and according to an attorney I spoke with, could be considered a case of simple assault under Vermont State um, Law, Title 13, Chapter 19, Subchapter 4A, a person is guilty of simple assault if he or she, three, attempts by physical menace to put another in fear of imminent serious bodily injury. That's what I felt. I, as you know, have a roadside mowing agreement. I have maintained my roadside for 25 previous years. Every year, by hand, I've never had an issue until this year, when Kari discovered that a previous select board had come up with this application, which I filled out, which I came and discussed, which was approved by, by five to zero. Bill also voted in favor of it. So he was aware that I had this agreement. I put up signs saying, do not mow, because I didn't trust him not to mow. Before the August 15th deadline I was given to do the maintenance myself, I did it with pruners. I called Kari and told him I had done it. He said, okay, great, thank you. I'm sure there won't be a problem. I left the signs up. So the day that Bill came and mowed, he ignored the sign and started mowing just past it, working his way north on my side of the road. So, from the Old West Church. He had mowed at Bray Bands, he came around, and then just started mowing. And so, I have an 11 minute conversation with Bill, recorded on my 
iPhone, where I am doing most of the talking, frankly, and asking him, where is the cooperation here? Why could you not call me and say, hey, Craig, you know, I drove by, I saw some trees that I think are a problem. Can I come over and show you what I'm talking about? That never happened. Bill brought up being concerned about the UPS trucks. I said, I don't care about UPS. His response was, well, you only care about yourself? I said, it's not your job or mine to worry about UPS. I asked Kari, has UPS called the town? Have they talked to the road commissioner saying there's a problem? No, that has not happened. Basically, it's my view that Bill is going to do whatever he wants to do. Um, and, and it's a concern, not just of mine, but of other landowners and other people who filled out these applications. There are no line of sight issues on my stretch of the road. The road crew has never had a problem plowing my road. Can I, can I ask a question? Yes. Um, so you, you've expressed uh, that, the, that there are other members of the community that share this concern, um, specific others who, uh, who have also been granted uh, uh, the ability to perform uh, roadside maintenance. Um, I'm not aware of that. Or do you have specific uh, information or testimony from others who, uh, who have expressed that concern to you? Uh, other people have expressed that concern to me directly as recently as today. And, and they, and I haven't looked at everybody that's here, but they were not choosing to come and be in this, okay. this role. But I, I know of at least three others who've expressed similar worries, I'll call them. Three other in individuals or applicants? Because we only issued three of those uh, right. applications in so, total this year. Um, two other applicants that I know of and one other person who had interaction with Bill uh, around mowing their roadside. Okay. But they were not an applicant. <clears throat> As I stated in my application, I do not want charitable spread onto my property. I'm just trying to highlight some of these things. Bill has had a, a total lack of respect for me as a landowner and a taxpayer. He and, and all of you work for us as residents, as taxpayers. And he doesn't seem to understand this. I think he's a bad representative of the town and as a, a road crew member and a select board member. I've had plenty of other friendly, humorous, easy interactions with other road crew members. I stop by when I see them, if I'm driving by or squeezing by, several this year. So, uh, Bill is mowing the roadsides in a much more aggressive way than, than people have been used to. And I've heard that from these other people. Um, the rest of this has to do with conflict of interest. Uh, does anybody have uh, any particular uh, comments or questions that they'd like to raise at, at this point? Um, Bill, uh, the instruction uh, that you've received or direction, any direction that you've received for uh, mowing or expectations around mowing, um, has that come from anywhere in particular? Um, it been communicated from uh, the other road crew members who have performed mowing? You're now asking a road crew member the question. Uh, so yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, this is not, more of like a training. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to get, that. what's that? I'm not going to answer okay. that here. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, I'd like to respond to that. Sure. So, so um, at some point early in Bill's roadside mowing career, um, 
or were discussing, you know, what the approach he should take is. And he described that he was prioritizing, well, he's going to do all, every road in town with a four foot width of the mower and then go back and get um, back to eight feet, um, knowing that he wouldn't be able to get to every road. Um, but he was going to prioritize the busier roads and the ones with line of sight issues. And then also going up eight to 10 feet. I remember specifically talking about trucks and UPS trucks. Um, and we discussed that and I said, good, that, sound, that sounds appropriate. I recognize that is more aggressive than maybe what was done last year or previous years. I don't know, there's nothing in writing that I have found. Um, and that, you know, that speaks to my point, but we should be more clear about what the expectations are in future years. Yeah, um, I, I think uh, I think that's a, a fair assessment. Um, uh, you know, I think uh, first and foremost, uh, uh, I think that there's uh, there's the feeling of uh, disrespect and uh, and that the situation um, didn't uh, follow a, an appropriate. Um, course of you know reasonable outreach before before any action was taken, and for that I think frankly you're you're owed an apology, Craig. Um, that, I haven't heard one yet from him. Right. Well, and so uh, I would invite one from Bill. I I, I know he's expressed uh, that to both Kari and and I've heard uh, I've heard that from from Bill. I don't think Bill was an unreasonable individual. You know I think that these types of conversations put people in really difficult position, particularly when uh, you come in uh, talking about um, contacting a lawyer and feeling threatened and quoting statute about what uh, what simple assault is defined as. Yeah, I think right. that really ratchets up the, the, okay. the tenor well, of the discourse. It makes it difficult for people to come back down to a normal tenor of discourse that is that is responsible and respectful. Let Do you think that's fair? Just respond to that for a moment. Yeah. Kari has apologized several times okay. for the whole situation. It's been two weeks. I didn't say anything about legalities until this moment. And so I didn't ratchet anything up until I got no response and no apology. I mean, I, I know you're I taking this seriously, and I appreciate that. I really do. But this is, this is beyond the pale serious for me. I've never felt threatened like this in my life. And so, I, you know, I called a friend who is an attorney, described what happened, and he's the one that said, wow, this could constitute assault. And, and I hesitated whether or not to bring that into this conversation. But hearing nothing in the way of any kind of, you know, you apologize on his behalf, yeah, Bill realizes he probably should have reached out or avoided mowing your stretch on that final day. Okay, but I hadn't heard it from Bill. And you say people are put in these positions. Bill initiated this position. He put me into the position. He was the aggressor. And so I'm not willing to accept what you said about, you know, well, people get put in these situations. I, I, I think that's a you mistake. That. No, that's what you said. said. And so I noted it because I wanted to respond. I'm sorry, go ahead. As I said, this is really hard it, for all of us. It, it is hard, but and could I suggest we, we table this for now? We're going to have another meeting in two weeks. This will give Kari and Bill a chance to have a conversation. Maybe they, somebody will reach out to you. And they, you. They have had, I need to yeah. get this resolved. I don't want to wait another two weeks to then say, okay, now we'll discuss it and we'll get back to you. I, I need 
I need that process to and be moving forward. And, and I'm, I'm not clear on what, what specifically you're asking well, uh, it, as, as resolution. So this is, this is one thing that I have written down here at the end of my notes. What happens next? You know, I, I said to Kari, and this now gets into the conflict of interest, I think it's very inappropriate that a select board member was hired as a member of the road crew, whether it's part-time or full-time, because who's the boss? Is it Kari telling the select board slash road crew member what to do? Or is it the select board member telling the road commissioner what to do? It just, when this whole thing came about, it raised a lot of flags for me, and I did not say anything. I only said something when this happened and all this came up. But it, it is a it's a valid point, and I know the conflict of interest law changed. I think it goes into effect January 1st, the revisions. I don't know what it means. I'm not a lawyer. Um, I, I couldn't possibly read it all, but um, it, it's it's just not appropriate to have him be in those two roles. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought for a moment. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm following you, Greg. Okay. And, and so I. Um, oh, so so I I asked you know, what happens next, and Kari told me in an email. Well, we have not had a situation like this come up since I started, and we don't have a process in place for it. So I wasn't sure what that means exactly. Is there no town process or? That, that's not it, true. And so, so I don't know what happened. This, uh, I mean, I, I specifically remember a situation like this not you know, happening before my tenure, but uh, within arm's reach of it. Um, and uh, and it was around roadside mowing and um, threatening behavior. I mean, it, this is, um, uh, pretty, pretty clear to me, you know, uh, Bill's role as an, an employee, uh, part-time employee uh, hired to do roadside mowing specifically um, would follow a path that goes through uh, a situation being raised uh, to uh, Kari and his role as a road administrator um, and then brought to, uh, to the select board for uh, review because we are the employer of, uh, of the, to, yeah. We are we are the employer that would review that situation. So you know I think um, in looking at at this situation as it has arrived and uh, I with reviewing the situation with Kari, um, it was important to um, have a uh, a timely forum for you to express your concerns to the select board publicly um, and and raise the issue. And then I think uh, that is that was really the intent for tonight. Um, and uh, from there, it would be uh, a personnel matter that we would have to take up as a, as a separate order of business. Um, and I would propose that that's what we uh, continue to look at uh, okay. as. A couple quick questions. Sure. Just about that. So you would be taking this on. Bill would, of course, recuse himself. Yeah. He was a part-time member of the road crew, no longer employed by the town, but that wouldn't seem to matter. Is that correct? Because it happened when he was employed. Yeah, that's correct. So I mean, all, all of that would be taken. I mean, I think we have uh, we, we have a, uh, the end of a mowing season, um, and uh, he was uh, hired in a very specific role, um, and uh, to um, to do very specific scope of work. Um, and I think there's a lot of room for dialogue around roadside mowing and all of the other things um, uh, that need to be discussed. Um, it'd be nice if we can try to separate some of those things, but um, but they are. They are certainly tangential to to this issue, uh, I think. And so, uh, my my proposal is that um, we uh, carve out some time in the uh, next agenda um, to take that particular personnel issue up as a personnel issue, okay. um, and then uh, bring into consideration how that uh, impacts decisions uh, about who's doing roadside mowing uh, or. 
uh, or any other role if they serve uh, as a as a as an official for the town, um, and whether or not there is a conflict of uh, interest issue to to take up. Um, I, I I am following what you're saying regarding who's responsible to whom, um, and and I think we can make that more clear. Um, yeah, for sure. And, and Curry responded well to me, I think, and yeah. said, "Yeah, I mean, you've got a point. Maybe it's it's not totally clear, but you know, Bill seems like he could be deferential to me and." You know, I, um, I think it, it might be helpful to, 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 to peel away the conflict of interest uh, commu communication mm -hmm. because I think that that particular phrase is relative to a very particular um, sp sp uh, scope of conflicts um, and it may not be as relevant. This might be just a personnel policy change that we need to consider making as a, as a town. Um, Anyway, I, I just throw that out there. Yeah, um, no, I, I hear that. Um, uh, I, I only want to say one more thing, and that is I brought up the simple assault term so that you really heard me and how serious this was. It, it wasn't just like, oh, you know, I was out there on the road and he didn't stop. <laughs> it was way worse than that for me. And, and that's what I'm talking about. And Kari took me very seriously, which I appreciate. And, and he represented you. that that concern yeah. explicitly. Yeah. So uh, that, that, was, I'm sure that re was registered. Yeah. That's why I said what I said. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you, Craig. Do you have any other questions? Uh, I don't at this at this time. Um, we'll have a uh, kind of, dig in. Yeah, as we dig into like what next steps are, um, we'll, we'll reach out. OK. Um, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Next on the agenda, and sorry, we're running uh, running behind, but uh, we have the East Montpelier Fire Department. Um, can you guys want to? You can stand over there if you want, or sit over there if you want to project. You're welcome to take a seat up here. But it's a pretty straightforward topic. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Albert. Thank you. Um, so, oh, let's see. Um, sorry, I got distracted. I'm it's not okay. good at multitasking. I was never good it's at your meeting. I'm a guest. Oh boy, <laughs> please don't. Um, so uh, we're uh, here to hear a need, uh, Albert. Uh, please, yes. Relative to uh, a new ambulance purchase. That's correct. Uh, do you want to add some context to that? For I think everybody pretty well understands it, but uh, yeah. Well, basically, um, we have two ambulances. One's a 2010, and the other one's a 2016. Um, our goal is to try and keep the ambulances on like a 15-year rotation, give or take. Um, and our, both ambulances happen to go down for a three or four day, three day period roughly, two and a half days. So that was a little stressful for us. But the one ambulance has been down, was down for close to a month. We get it back for a day, take it on its first call. And we can't even make it to the call. We had to call for another ambulance, send it back, have them look at it. And finally, <coughs> we were able to figure out what was wrong and get that ambulance. And that's the newer ambulance fixed. But anyway, our goal is to purchase a, a new ambulance. Uh, this would be brand new. I think in the article they put in the paper, they said it was a demo. An old one was a demo. But this one would be brand new to us. Um, it's. 280,000 and change uh, for the co total cost of the ambulance. And we would be putting down 100,000 out of our capital reserve fund. And then the remainder of that would be on a loan five to seven years. Okay. Then our plan is to keep the old ambulance to replace our <coughs> utility vehicle. Oh, okay. And our utility vehicle right now, back bed, is falling apart, right. and it won't support the tray in the back. And truthfully, the tray is 
convenient as a pickup truck, but as a utility vehicle, you know, it sort of becomes a, a jack, jack of all and master of none kind of pickup truck. Mm -hmm. And the body, the slide out is very heavy. So when it's pointing downhill, you struggle to pull it out to get to the stuff in the front. And if the truck's pointing uphill and you release the lock, it wants to run you over. And so with the ambulance and the compartmentation, we feel that that'll help us access stuff more easily and more safely. And, and the other thing is a realistic possibility if we have a problem with our other ambulance, the backup ambulance, and that's down for a while, we might be able to press this one back in uh, into action as an ambulance if we had to. Um, and so that's kind of where we're at. Um, and then just the question was asked in East Montpelier, and I didn't have the numbers in front of me, but right now I can let you know roughly what we're looking at. Um, presently, we've only got 5,000, we made a payment, so it's less, uh, of a payment for the our newest ambulance. And that newest ambulance will be paid off, and we will drop that loan from our books. Our present fire truck, you know, our newest one, we've got 142,000 on that, which is gonna go out another six years, roughly, six and a half. And then our striker loan, which was the loan we took out, uh, started many years ago with the defibrillators, and then we added the power lift cots, and then we added the auto loaders for the power lift cots, and that keeps rolling over, and right now we presently owe 18000 on that, but that is a no interest loan, so we have not pushed ourselves to pay it down, or we just figured we can leave it there because they're not charging us interest, and, um, and that's got... I think eight or nine years left on it. You know? Roughly how many years are left on that striker loan? I think it's paid off in February. Oh, is that that yeah. that? Okay. It was in February. February? All right. So that one that one will come off the books too. Um well, does anybody have any questions or I, I'd just like to understand this. So we would pay sixty thousand, that's what you're asking for no, from us. No, no money. What are you asking from us exactly? Permission. We can't yeah. spend Permission over... to take your 100000 yeah. okay. yeah. out of and your existing capital reserve fund. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. If it goes over 20000 we have to ask. Okay. And so we're asking for permission to spend our money yeah. <laughs> that then, we have set aside to how purchase. Does the, how does the rest get paid? That's that, a, it's a loan. It, it's, yeah, a loan. Yeah, it's a loan, and so the interest would just be part of your budget. Okay. Presently, we have over two hundred thousand in our capital reserve. Mm -hmm. So a hundred would disappear. Yeah. That gives us about one twelve, and that allows us to do our normal business of any capital surprises come up, whether it's a piece of equipment, mm -hmm. major vehicle repair. We can go ahead and proceed with that. And the funds to pay for the ambulance, or the loans, comes out of your, your ambulance fees? Yeah, re revenue, yes. Okay, every year. Okay. And East Montpelier has approved it already? Yes, they have. Just waiting for us? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> You've convinced me of the need. <laughs> Any uh, other yeah. big capital expenses on their other vehicles or building things in the next well, couple of our, years? Other than the utility vehicle, which had, I like the idea of right. rotating yeah, the like ambulance that. down to a utility yeah. vehicle. Yeah, the, but the, you know, Seth from East Montpelier did say, though, you know, that, that ambulance holds up well because it's parked indoors. Mm -hmm. But the minute you move it outdoors, you'll see right. the age mm -hmm. show up quick. Yeah. So, yeah, but still, it, it's something we presently own. It's paid off. Yeah. And if it works for us, and even if it buys us, two, three years, and then we can look at saying, all right, well, how do we want to go from here? But right now, that pickup truck just, it's kind of not working anymore, because that bed is so rotten. It's not, to me, it's not safe to, to try and use that slide out with a rotten bed. I don't think the truck's worth putting a new bed on it, truthfully, in my mind at this point. And, and I assume the sort of cost-benefit analysis of new versus used pretty heavily this way. Yeah. We've, well, we've, we've pretty much, with the exception of 
the most recent truck purchase. Most all our purchases have been used. And we feel like we did good with that, that ambulance that we're looking to replace because we got it from uh, Williston and it was used, 25,000. Um, and, and, but now we feel like it's breaking down more and more and having different issues more and more. It's pushing 15 years old and we feel like we don't want to go down that rabbit hole of always being out of service and always having repairs with that. And when, when will you be able to take delivery on the new one? There's actually, the company we bought it from is out of Syracuse, New York, and that's all they do is ambulances. Um, that's where Barrytown gets their ambulances through. Um, and they have a few coming in, and we asked them to hold one contingent on getting a yes from you folks. We're hoping to see it within a month if we get the go-ahead. And that's fully fitted? Uh, ready um, for service? It, yeah, it includes the transferring the auto load cot and that kind of stuff. The only thing would be a question mark would be the radio. Um, whether it makes sense to pull the radio out of the old ambulance, move it to the new ambulance, take the radio out of the utility, move it to the ambulance, and you start throwing labor in, sometimes you find it's cheaper to just start fresh. And that would be the only other option, the only other bigger ticket item as an accessory would be a radio to put in the, the new ambulance. Now, who would own the ambulance? Who would actually own the ambulance? Would that be owned by the towns well, or by you? We guys? own them as long as we're in business. Right. But by default, it all reverts back to you. To us, we yeah. don't have to it. Yeah. yeah, just curious. Yeah. I, I appreciate the, um, the description of the cap, your capital plan, but I think it's important to get it in writing so we can see you know, what's on the books now, what's coming to, for the full context of this. And I know we've been talking about that for a while. It's something that's called for in the interlocal agreement. But so. we, did, we did share the capital plan with you in, in the November meeting. I'm pretty sure. Last capital, November? Yeah, every year in November, we usually present the capital with our budget. <clears throat> Uh, but a five, a five yeah, year. Yeah. I don't recall seeing that. But. I'm pretty, I mean, I could send it to you if you want. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. What is the year of the chassis of this um, ambulance that you're buying? What, the year of the chassis? It will be a 2024. Okay. And how old is the, the second one? I'm just curious. I'm 2016. 100k uh, left in the capital reserve uh, for other expenditures. You know, I, I think it's a significant purchase, but obviously it's in it's in the budget, um, and uh, and you guys have a plan for making use of, of the old one. Um, I, I don't have any further questions. It seems like a pretty obvious need, so I'd entertain uh, a motion to uh, to approve uh, the purchase of the. Uh, of the 2024 new ambulance as uh, Al Alberts presented it um, to be partially funded. Uh, it's $100,000, I guess, out of the capital reserve budget and then the balance um, being being financed um, by the fire department. So moved. Second. Any further questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Thank you. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy shopping. Yeah. <laughs> there, there's not a lot of shopping. No, it doesn't sound like <laughs> it. It doesn't also sound happy either. No, so, you know, no. Most of the places we reached out to, well, even if you wanted one, give us about three years and we might get it to you. Yeah, so it, we were lucky to. So it, 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 I have the same conversation when it comes up uh, with, uh, with our town purchases um, and equipment. like. Our, our state struggles with critical mass, um, and we're also, off, often going out of state and purchasing things from uh, from dealers who specialize in these things. But you know, we're buying onesies and twosies and threesies. Um, is there is there any uh, any effort or anything like that to kind of coordinate purchases with other departments that might be on similar purchasing cycles to see if there's like some sort of discount that can be. Coordinated? Is that 
I, I mean, I, I think we're looking more towards trying to see if we can't utilize the state. Yeah. But for some of that stuff, it becomes more specialized in the sense of saying, like the ambulance Berry City buys is not the same kind of mm -hmm. ambulance that Berry Town buys, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is really not quite the same. And we're kind of like a mix maybe yeah. between what Berry City's getting and what Berry Town's getting. And we're kind of in the middle. And so they become unique mm -hmm. in the sense of how how you spec out that piece of equipment sure. to each town. And so I think it, you know, most places don't get just a boilerplate <coughs> ambulance. They kind of spec it based on they like the seat to be here with the compartmentation with drawers they use here versus, and we're, we're kind of saying basically we're going to take what you give us, but we want at least a big box, a certain size box, and certain things, four wheel drive. We want, uh, you know, some places don't won't get four wheel drive, they'll need four wheel drive. Sure. But we want four wheel drive, we yeah. Yeah. you know, and things like that. And that's one reason why our ambulance is also a little more like Barry Town. If you yeah. see, you read the newspaper, oh, how come Barry Town's getting their ambulance for 169? Yeah. You know, well, they don't get four wheel drive anymore. Um, they get the smallest possible angles they can get. You know. But then they replace them every three or four years, too, I think. So they, they can't afford to spend that kind of money and then replace them three or four years. We're trying to get 15 years out of ours. That's our goal. Well, thanks, Albert. Yeah. All right. Appreciate uh, the you. time. And, All right. um, Thank you. It was posted. Yeah. And I'll, I'll send you the most recent so you have it. That'd be great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Albert. You're welcome. Uh, so now we have a, a conservation easement request uh, and approval. Larry? Right. This, this is a, it's a happy time. Um, <laughs> happy request. Um, <clears throat> strictly speaking, all that I was, we were required to do is send you this written memo, which I hope you all have. <clears throat> but um, of course, you're free to uh, call us here. Uh, I kind of jumped the gun uh, in, in the sense that I asked to be on the agenda. Um, but I don't propose to go through this whole thing. I do want to introduce uh, Mead Benhammer, who is the Vermont Land Trust representative who's put together, along with Charlotte and, and Scott, this. Uh, proposed easement, um, as you would have seen in the materials that are wrote. And, um, so, Mead may have some things he would like to go over, um, but if it's appropriate, I would just ask that if you, whatever questions you have about this, uh, please ask us. Um, in, in our view, this is an exciting prospect. Um, the uh, the conservation fund has been used 11 times over the course of its almost 30-year existence. And I'm not personally familiar with the, with the uh, details of all of those other tracks that have been involved to have a general knowledge about them. I think this is probably the purest, uh, most appropriate use of the conservation fund that I've seen, certainly since I've been here. Um, but with that, I'll turn it over to, to me to test some things he'd like to say. Yeah, so, so glad to be in front of you this evening. Um, I'm Mead Binhammer, Central Vermont Project Director for Vermont Land Trust. I um, have had the immense pleasure of working with Charlotte and Scott over the last year, getting to know their property, which, like Larry has, has mentioned, just has tremendous ecological values. It protects an important tributary to Pekin Brook um, with these amazing wetlands that uh, you know contribute to flood resilience and also create um, important ecological habitat. Um, Charlotte and Scott have been tremendous stewards of the land for many years and want to continue, continue their legacy through this conservation easement that would see the land permanently protected. Um, the last time Vermont Land Trust partnered with the town of Callis um, through the Cal Conservation Fund was on an adjoining property, the Armstrong Farm, now the Bedett Farm. Um, which we also conserved, and so this piece, um, you know, really see, we see it as sort of an extension of that project. It creates this this larger conservation corridor in the area and uh, has immense ecological benefits, flood resilience benefits, and uh, and is just you know a really important piece of land and happy to be involved. So, 
If you have any questions for us about you know, what the easement entails, um, this would be an easement sole held by the Vermont Land Trust that we would steward annually. Um, we you know, have a, a conservation staff, including myself, but uh, approximately 40 of us at Vermont Land Trust who monitor these conservation easements annually. Um, we have a legal defense team in case there were ever to be an issue with the conservation easement. Um, and uh, all documents and reporting would be provided to the Conservation Commission at the time of closing for, for the town's uh, records as well. I noticed the word endowment, that a portion of the town's contribution is going to be used as an endowment, and that is in perpetuity? Exactly. That is, um, yes, all of our conservation easements must have an endowment that ensures that we have staffing and the capacity to monitor them in perpetuity. Um, it also helps to fund our, our legal defense fund, which is specific to any you know unforeseeable issues with a conservation easement. So those funds will be invested and they'll generate Gen generate revenue that we use for our stewardship fund, yes. Yeah. Uh, are there other questions? So in terms of your stewardship um, visits, is it once a year and just sort of walking and making sure things are Exactly. No one's using it inappropriately or something. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I always joke when I say that you know we come out once a year and make sure nobody's building a McDonald's. But um, it's a, it's more detailed than that. We walk the boundaries, of course, and we check sort of um, to ensure that the purposes of the conservation easement are upheld. The purposes in this case are you know sustainable forestry, ecological protection, and and sustainable agriculture around the residents and the fields. And so, you know, we would be checking in with the landowner, making sure they don't have any sort of questions about the easement that we could easily answer, but then also walking the boundaries to make sure that um, the conservation values are, are being upheld. Um, for my very lay understanding uh, and clarification, so uh, the property uh, remains under the ownership of, uh, of an individual who then, uh, I guess, still manages uh, the development of the the forestry plan and that modifies on the normal cycles that those generally modify on in partnership with a forest or, or, or whoever other you know entity that they in, uh, invite into that particular conversation and then um, uh, the land trust holds I guess just the the development rights right so exactly um, I see um, yes yeah, so we have the, the develop grant of development rights and conservation restrictions which is just um, you know, it, it tracks with the deed of the property and ensures that, you know, it couldn't be subdivided and developed into house mm -hmm. lots. Mm -hmm. But whoever owns the property has the ultimate management rights. They create a forest <coughs> management plan. They can create, you know, grazing plan or those sorts of other property uses are all allowed under the, under the terms of the conservation easement. We just make sure that it doesn't basically get developed or built or, or those sorts of things. Does the easement put restrictions on the amount of timber that can be taken off? It's not the amount of timber. We do have some ecological protection zones, which is one of the sort of highlights here. There's three vernal pools on the property, so we want to see that any forest management plan is crafted in a way that's you know respectful and responsible to those important ecological areas. Um, but that said, you know, it, Neil Maker, the current forester and, and future foresters of the property, um, you know, are able to sort of create a, a whole forest management plan the board feed is not something we're analyzing, just the locations of where mm -hmm. harvest might take place. Yeah. And, and just to clarify what I read in the memos, I think, um, that public access or lack of public access would be up to the landowner. Correct. At and the discretion of the landowner. Yeah. Just, just as current, yes. This is, is in, in our experience, I think, with the uh, conservation fund here, um, a number of the tracks that we've um, contributed to the conservation easements don't have provisions for recreational asset. That's They could, but that's just one kind of easement, and um, um, this is not that kind. And the Conservation Commission is fine with that? Yes, because absolutely. You, because of the ecological benefits and other things? Yes, yes. Is that something that could be changed at, at some point, if, if through like a, a dialogue? Um, 
uh, with the property owner and I guess the conservation commission or, or other uh, interested parties like right now that, that that's not part of the easement but is that is that something that can be modified in the in the future it, it's a little unique in that it's not I'm now, I'm now thinking about a different track you know if there were another track um, where uh, that wasn't necessarily baked into the initial uh, into the initial easement but you know through the development or trails or other kind of adjoining parcels that would make it more appealing to maybe try to lump in that kind of access is that something that could then be modified or added to the easement yes um the short answer is yes uh the longer answer is there's like three three different avenues that you could pursue there one would be sort of the landowner permission agreement which mm -hmm. could have an expiration date um, the second would be an access easement which would just which would be allowed under the conservation easement it would be a separate document from it um, but you know our typical conservation easement doesn't include a public access clause unless the landowner say explicitly desires that in which case we do an access easement separate from the conservation easement that grants public access I see. Um, and that's like people call them trail easements sure. um, you know where uh, East Montpelier, of course, has great examples of, of trail easements for, for their EMTI network. Um, so they that don't is necessarily have to happen at the beginning. You, those those, no, those can be added on. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The, uh, you know, the callous approach to trails has been different and more flexible than East Montpelier. There's only one, <clears throat> one um, callous trail that is on an actual easement, and that, ironically or appropriately, is Darby Bradley, the founder of the Mont Land Trust mm -hmm. property, who created an easement. But the rest of them are strictly uh, at, the, at the sufferance of the, uh, uh, the landowner and can be um, changed or ended uh, at any time. That's why they have to work so hard on the Trails Committee to make sure that the right. landowners are not unhappy with what's happening on their property. I, I imagine something like that like this would, could possibly be worked out. Mm -hmm. um, you may have caught just a little resistance from me. I, uh, I've talked to some scientists, uh, especially one here in town who's well known but doesn't need to be named, who are a little concerned that there's maybe a little too much excitement about putting in recreational trails just anywhere and everywhere. Absolutely. Uh, especially in some of these. This is, this is not a major interior forest block, but, but it is a... Um, uh, a corridor, mm -hmm. um, and uh, you can love things to death, and I worry a little bit about that. I think we need to take into account any talk of having new trail systems as one that's balanced by and informed by the, the science of what the effect of a trail would, would be. Yeah. Uh, Scott, go ahead. You've been <laughs> politely uh, <laughs> raising, raising your hand. Well, number one, I'm, I'm really grateful to everyone involved in helping us realize this project. My family has lived there for over 75 years and have done the best we can to maintain a, a, a useful, intact property. Uh, on another subject, uh, there is a significant public access existing. It's a vast snowmobile trail. Um, that's, uh, I would say, an important part of the vast network. Uh, on this land? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. It's specifically provided for, uh, you know, and recognized in the easement. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> You've been very generous in the past. We appreciate that. Um, uh, could, could I um, also sure. say something? Well, I just want to show people uh, on these maps that I always look at when I'm here. <laughs> this one um, is interior forest blocks, and all you have to know, I mean, you can all see this green stuff, and we're right in here. Right in the middle of the Right in forest. the middle. So, um, you know, you've got Pekin going east-west, and now us with the Armstrongs going north-south. And the wetland actually goes all the way up to uh, Moscow Mill Road, and then there's Carr Brook on the other side, which gives access to animals going to Woodbury, to the Kingsbury Branch up and down. So, you know, in that sense, when you're looking at it as a town resource, um, 
it, 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 it's right where we want it to be, or what, where we want to protect. Well, and, and thank you, Charlotte. I think that's a, a really uh, in, important part uh, and point to bring up. You know, I did the. I'm going to do it because that doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, I, I've sat in, in, in meetings where folks have expressed the concerns about you know, trail access in, in particular areas and the need to preserve uh, these interior blocks. And, and, um, and it's all very warranted. And, and I think what it is helpful as a community, as, as we identify these resources and, and look for our opportunities, like let's be deliberate about where, where we're choosing to realize our conservation efforts where we have like high value assets that we want to protect either ecologically or because they have connectivity whether it's con connectivity for habitat or connectivity for trails like try to develop a trail network that is uh, is prioritized and, and deliberate in a way that you know by being deliberate about it it, it eases the pressure of uh, of, of just trying to, you know, grab little chunks of conservation where you can get them. And, and I think it's just something as a community, that's the balancing act that you need to, um, that you need to have when you're in the middle of an affordable housing crisis, like being deliberate about where you choose those conservation uh, activities, uh, I, I think really helps a lot. And this is what makes this particular one really really exciting and it's like realizing some of that uh, prioritization and and doing it in a way that makes a lot of sense i think for the community so that, that's exactly right that's yeah. what i was trying to articulate and then, you've done it I, you, well, and, and, you know, I, I absolutely hear what you're saying with the trails and i only no, no, brought no, it up not necessarily for this one but you know i think when there are other when there are other opportunities we might want to look at it through a, a slightly different lens and and take into consideration those those uh, accesses, particularly when we're applying public funds to help facilitate yeah. these particular initiatives. Yeah. But um, but you know certainly as proposed, it seems uh, warranted uh, to me. Um, so with that, um, I guess the action would be to uh, to approve uh, the conservation commission's uh, proposed use of uh, of reserve funds um, uh, as as proposed by uh, the. Conservation Committee. So moved. Second. All in favor? Can I just ask oh. one more question? How much money is left in the Conservation Fund right now? There's about 47900 but that's not taking into account the $5,000 for the survey of the town forest that mm. still has it. Still has it. She's delaying, I think, yeah. until stick season, so she's got some surveying to do. Um, and obviously, this 8500 would come out of that yeah. as well. Okay, I'm ready now. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Thank you. Thank Thank you. Very much. Nice to meet you all. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. And thank you, Scott. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which town? Park. 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 Which town? It's up in this park. Okay. All right. Thanks. It's got the mapping is atrocious. <laughs> I understand. Especially what shows up on the towns. Map, uh, on my map. <laughs> <laughs> I would just like to say one thing as I go, and that is a personal yeah. thank you to these two with a that land. So I've noticed that we still have a decent crowd in attendance, and I just want to take a, a, a check to see what everyone's planning on speaking to or hearing just to, just in case we need to move things around a bit on the agenda for committee commission budgets okay great that's the next thing that's the next thing so we'll keep with that um, so uh, the next uh, block of considerations is the, uh, the fiscal year 2026 budget um, and discussing uh, some of the budgetary considerations uh, with the Lister Zoning Administrator, Delinquent Tax Collector, uh, Development Review Board, um, and the Cemetery Commission, um, Trails Committee, and Town Clerk. Um, should we just go in that order? Okay. All right. Um, so. Uh, with the listers, 
Uh, would you like to speak to considerations for the up upcoming year and budgetary needs? I think we've submitted a, a budget that was in line with uh, previous years. We've always submitted budgets that actually uh, came under or we spent less money than we budgeted. This year it might be difficult. Uh, this past year, we spent, uh, three of us went to four days of assessment training in Montpelier. I, uh, I believe it was paid for by the state, and it's the town that picked up some of that. So we don't know what's going to happen with costs in training. Um, certainly it would be cost in man hours. Um, but I think we budgeted, I don't have the budget in front of me, but I think it was in the neighborhood of $20,000. Yeah, is that uh, 20, 26, 840? Yeah. So, so um, a couple points I'd like to make about this proposal is that um, the current budget includes $6,000 for a professional assessor. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty significant strategic decision that needs to be made. My understanding from Wilson and, and John and Steve is they're willing and able to continue serving as listeners, but I remember a year ago there was conversation about at some point the model may change and we should start budgeting for it. So we need to, to think about about that. Yeah, and that was relative to training, right? That the state was going to require, and yeah. that just hasn't quite come to fruition quite yet. Or we've been taking the training for years. Yeah, you know, pretty much every year. This year's training was pretty extensive. And it looks like it's going to become more extensive as time goes on, so. Okay. The other thing within that 26,840 is an allocation for the, uh, the new mapping software. Yeah. And that currently lives in the planning commission uh, budget. Mm -hmm. So we'll just be sure not to duplicate that in the budget. Um, so the extra time that is, oh, I see, the listers ed and training. Uh, so that 1500, does that now kind of reflect the, the time commitment of participating in those trainings, or is it just the cost of paying for mm -hmm. registration mm -hmm. fees? You know, some of the fees are picked up by the state. Okay. Um, the state runs the trainings, and we're going to continue to do them. We've been doing them, I've been doing them now for six years. John's done them for longer. And Steve's new at it, but you know, we'll continue to train until we're replaced by professional assessors. Yeah. Which is the move the state wants to make. They don't want volunteer listers. Um. What was Apex? Apex is one of the software, I'm not even sure exactly. The software that John uses, I'm yeah. not sure what it's for. Do you have? No, I know that I can't uh, access the software because it requires a cell phone. Uh, <laughs> 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 Two-factor authentication. Can John access it? Yeah, can access it. Okay. We're talking about accessing it from oh. And I mean, we can access it when we're in the office, that's fine. Okay. But at home I won't be able to access it. Okay. I did ask him if he could get the app so it would work on my rotary phone, but you know. <laughs> 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 You can get authenticators to work in browsers like we did on your computer and your stuff. Well, I mean, that seems pretty straightforward to me. That, that's pretty, pretty relative to what we took into consideration last year, and it doesn't sound like we're, mm -hmm. we're quite at the point where we have to make. Uh, Significant considerations or changes to uh, to how we're structuring it quite yet, but uh, I don't see a lot of a lot of movement um, on that particular budget item. To continue with the listers as is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I think that makes sense for another year if, if that's how they feel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just have a quick question on the postage, which wasn't there last year. Well, expenses. Well, it, was, but it's it was 150 last year, and it's yeah. 2,300 this year. The postage, we do have to send out certified letters for change in appraisals, mm -hmm. uh, which yeah. happen all the time. I think yeah. this year we sent out, I want to say 108, 
Is this okay. not for the postcards? No. Yeah, that'll be in this fiscal year, I believe. Oh, okay. Probably not all of them. So is that an estimation then on how many more that we're we're going to have for well, this coming we, year? We kind of overestimate the stuff we come in under. So. I, I'd like to follow up with them about the postage okay. and make sure we're not duplicating it. Yeah. In, in, right. there's because postage there may in other be parts. other, the town clerk right. postage yeah. and the, yeah. yeah. Right. I thought that would have they to do something them. with the appraisal, but I don't know. That's because they do have to send out postcards to every landowner before the reappraisals come to their yeah. properties, but mm. that should be starting this year, so it shouldn't all be okay. So we just want it in the right, in the right department. And the postage is a tricky thing to get in the right place. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Thank, well, thank you. you, listeners. Uh, moving on to zoning administrators, John. No. He probably just say, look at the budget. That's what it is. Just so same as last year. Last year, I think he he, he proposed a rate reduction. So. Right. Didn't they eliminate the assistant last year? Yeah. We didn't eliminate. We just we just reduced the hours. That was uh, Jan's proposal. She still doesn't accept any pay. <clears throat> she is proposing. She proposed an increase to John's yeah. stipend, but he didn't incorporate that in his. <laughs> Goodness. But, uh, personally, I'm inclined to go with Jan's recommendation. <laughs> That, I mean, that's, uh, you mean she proposed it again this year? Or was she, last year she proposed it? She proposed taking it to 6000 which is you know, 500 a month. And he left it at five. And he left it at five. He certainly does more than $500 a month. Why don't you just make a note there, Kari, and when we get to it, we'll talk about it. Okay. Yeah. I, I think that's fair. I, I mean, I, I'm yeah, inclined uh, to take Jan up on her offer. Uh, it seems reasonable that, uh, for one, I just don't think that John probably doesn't want to do it forever, and we're not going to be able to attract anybody right. to the scope right. of work if we're uh, we if we're not marching up our every yeah, year. If we're not getting comfortable with what that expense actually is. Mm, good point. Um, so, so make a note. Don't add it yet, but make a note. Yeah. Yeah. Do we have a sl do we have a slush fund? Is that what they do? We do not have a slush fund. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes! Um, uh, all right. Uh, next is uh, the delin uh, delinquent tax collector. Um, and here. Sandra. I'm here. Hi. Yay. Hello. Hi. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Sandra. Hi. <laughs> How's everybody? Hanging in there. Well, how are you? We miss you. Very well, thank you. Well, we just assumed that you'd be attending more of these just for old time's sake, but I guess not. Uh, well, <laughs> they are so exciting. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, so, uh, what do we have uh, this year for 2026? Any significant changes or, uh, or concerns on the horizon? Uh, no, I did ask the board to continue the stipend mm -hmm. at the FY25 level. You, uh, at the FY24 level, you agreed to continue it through FY25 even though the budget line on it was less than the FY24 budget. And that was because I, I think we thought, or I thought, that uh, someone with no or very little experience would be hired and would need to be trained. So you would need some other training uh, costs associated with that position, but I was reappointed. And um, I think the numbers, I, I mean, we are doing very well with delinquent taxes. I, I did provide the numbers for you. Um, the delinquent taxpayers stipend is at this point fully covered by the penalty of 8%. The delinquent taxes from year to year run about the same every year. And um, we've just 
we've done very well this year in collecting them. I, you've heard me say this before. I'm a carrot, not a stick type of collector. And for our community, that appears to be a very effective and um, means to use. Uh, I, everyone has their own style. That's my style. And it has, I think, worked really well for us. I'm not so sure that we see any um, that we see. At this point, I do not know if there is a tax sale on the horizon. And if there is, uh, it could be one small parcel with one large implication. But we'll wait and see until after November 15th or what sugar's out. Otherwise, we're good. Oh, Karen, Karen could tell me, did that check come in from the settlement that we were expecting? No, but today was a holiday, so oh, right. I'll let you know. OK, yeah. Um, I so I'm asking yeah. for the budget, just to get to the number, I'm asking for the budget line to uh, remain at $11,000. Great. The question did come up from staff, office staff. Uh, did I want to include in the delinquent taxpayers uh, budget section amounts for postage and supplies? Uh, it's been the practice that postage and supplies comes out of the general office budget. Um, and I would think if you would want, to, if you did decide uh, to track the delinquent tax postage supplies and printing, um, it should probably be a net effect on the budget in that you would just subtract those amounts from the general right. office budget lines if, if you wanted to track it in that way. Is there is there a way to code those costs in in Nemric? Uh, so as yeah. far as when we get like when someone says a certified letter, they usually go to the post office. They take the credit card, and we can code each individual certified letter or each time. But most of the mailings that most of us do, we just grab stamps from the room and put them on our postage, and we don't write down. Oh, this was a Lister letter. Oh, this was a treasurer letter. This was a, I do track postage for elections, but only for the state and federal because those can get reimbursed. Um, so postage is really, we could track everything, but it would take a lot of time and effort to be specific about our track. I, I don't disagree. I, I think that this, this last year, you know, Sandra had raised a, an important point when we were considering the, the rate uh, for delinquent tax uh, relative to the statutory changes that were coming through and the increased costs associated with performing um, uh, those, those duties and now statutory obligations uh, to provide warning uh, in a particular way. And I, that's a really interesting conversation and information to have at, at hand, uh, particularly when we're taking those taking those things into consideration for the rate. Um, I don't think we need to formally track it, but I would hope that somebody's paying attention to that. It puts a lot of pressure on the towns um, to absorb a fair amount of cost in trying to collect collect delinquent taxes. We're fortunate that we have a Sandra. <laughs> yes. Who doesn't make it a yes, problem? But if it got any worse than that, um, okay. uh, it if could be a problem. If you just wanted numbers yeah. of like numbers of certified letters, I feel like that would be much easier to track than all of us trying to track exact postage each of us. No, <laughs> for sure. No, that yeah, that makes sense. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Thanks, Sandra. Thank Sandra. Thank nice you. to see you. Oh, thank you all very much. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. So too. sounds like sticking with eleven. Yes, yeah. 11 sounds yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, Thank development, you. Development uh, Review Board. Is there anyone speaking to that? 
Uh, Will is not you back on. We had a communication from Will. Um, we are yeah. all sort of novices at this. Um, and with Barbara's good advice, uh, I think she said the number of 545 covered. For, for training. Six, four, training six, four, four, six, four, five. A paid uh, yeah. note to hear. It went up a little bit higher because when Willa sent the documentation to me, she said a recording secretary for two hours times five meetings a year. And I asked, does that two hours include time post-meeting to edit the minutes and get them ready for proposal? So she added another $100 to what you guys had discussed yeah. because you didn't take into consideration post-meeting work by the secretary. So it's now three hours per meeting. And does that include uh, training as well? Because there were some other that, that, that was in there. Yeah, okay. and her, her, there are proposals in there. And yeah. She does allow, uh, for, uh, is it $300? I think for, for training. What, the LCT. What, what, oh, at the LCT. Mm -hmm. yeah. It comes highly recommended, the, mm -hmm. that training. I mean, I think that's pretty, pretty important work um, yes. for, to bring those guys up to speed. Yeah. Um, that should be budgeted for. And I think a recording such a secretary is a great idea relative to their role. Uh, next up uh, is the cemetery. <laughs> Bit of a revision from okay. Anybody planning to die soon? <laughs> <laughs> Take care. We <laughs> see that you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> what you are getting is a revision to the proposed budget that we sent you all last week. Uh, we're going to go through it. The news is all good. As I said in the first budget, the section's contract, his, his stipend, the mowing, and the hedge trimming are not increasing. They're the same as they were for 2025. Uh, supplies, okay, we got some things in there I want to talk about. I know the line that says burial expenses says zero. I think when we publish this budget next time, we just take that line out. Mm -hmm. We get paid to do burials. We pay the sexton to do the burial. Mm -hmm. We actually make a little money. For example, an urn burial, we charge 500. He charges us 450. So we actually make money burying people. So it's nothing we can budget for because we don't know how many there are going to be. You get a little further down and uh, you'll find that we now know roughly what the distribution from our endowment is going to be. And that's, it's been doing very well. This is more than we got in the last couple of years. Is so, that, yeah. that 11,400 oh, is pretty close to what we expect to get. So, special projects. The first good news is, you haven't heard already, last Saturday, 30 football players, two coaches, and three citizens gathered at Robinson Cemetery and painted that whole fence at no cost to the town. Nice. That's great. So we think the priming and the painting probably saved the town $8,000. Yes. That's great. The other good news is they are very enthusiastic about doing this work, and they've promised to come back next summer and paint the Old West Church Cemetery. Wow. That, we estimate, it's a more complicated fence, would be about $10,000 in labor. So that will probably come right out of this budget. I can't do it tonight because our budget is a separate warned issue. We have to discuss that at a warned meeting, but I have every confidence that we're just gonna throw that $10,000 out because we're gonna get it done for nothing. On top of that, We've got one other special projects item, and that is replacing the fence at the Ainsworth Cemetery. 
but it's always been a wood fence. We wanted to take that wood fence down and put up chain and post. It looks traditional, it's great, but we got a lot of opposition from people. The red are the people that want a wood fence. The blue is the people like me who are Scotsmen who want to save money. <laughs> so we like to do what the people of Callis think they want. And if they want a wooden fence, okay, we'll give them a wooden fence. That $6,800 is to put the fence up. It does not include painting. But that is not a big fence, and I have no doubt we can get volunteers to paint it. Yeah. And this is just the, the section that faces the road. The sides are already right. posts and chained. Mm -hmm. And they'll stay that way? Yeah. How long does that fence last generally? Well, years, I, I can't tell you because it's always been just a regular wood fence. This will be pressure treated mm -hmm. wood fence, so it'll last a good many years longer. Okay. It'll have to be painted occasionally, mm -hmm. but I, I won't be here. <laughs> but uh, we've had. It's been a lot of work, but we had pretty good luck getting people to come volunteer to paint fences. And knowing that U32 is enthusiastic about it, I think we'd have no trouble getting that done. So this survey was the one you put in Front Porch Forum? So it was just those who chose to answer? Right. Yes. There were 91 yeah. people who responded, which I'm told is phenomenal for a town of this size. But if, if we went to town meeting, people could reverse that if you could propose then it could be reversed. Is that correct? Good yeah. question. Yeah, our budget is a number. People vote to give us a budget or not give us a budget. If they said no, we're gonna say no to you because we don't want to spend that money on a fence. I assume we'd have to reconfigure the budget and have another special meeting to approve or disapprove. Why couldn't they just reduce it by the amount that would be saved? Yeah, we they could ask to time. amend it out of think. Yeah. 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 Because I suspect it might come up when people who may not have answered the survey are at town right. meeting. Okay. Because, yeah. Yeah. Sure, because it's a five thousand dollar difference, right? Exactly. Well, yeah. And and there was a, what I thought a very thoughtful comment yeah. on from which forum from who was it? Fletcher. Fletcher Dean. Yeah, Fletcher just said I, that. I think that asking about a plastic chain is right. different from a historically, you know, appropriate, uh, long lasting, uh, you know. A couple of people have told me it's unfortunate you use the word plastic. Yeah. yeah. I think but that if is. you go up to the Ainsworth Cemetery and you look at that fence, it looks like a freshly painted iron chain. Exactly. Until you pick it up, you wouldn't yeah. know it wasn't. Yeah. So but yeah, if the town meeting they wanted to say no, we won't do it. Fine, we'll put a plastic chain. Okay. So it's about God. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's plastic chain. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we will at our next meeting, which I think is the twenty third, the fourth Wednesday this month, we'll discuss that. I expect that we'll delete that ten thousand dollars from our budget request. We may add a little bit to uh, special projects because we have a few things that need to be done, a few stones need to be reset, and we never know when the tree is going to come down and have to be cut up. I mean, I've talked to Carrie about having the road crew do some of those things, and if they can, they will. They have in the past, but I think they have enough to do at the moment. <laughs> So I think that is where we are. Hopefully, we're going to present you with a budget of forty-seven, forty-eight thousand dollars, as opposed to forty-five thousand dollars for fiscal twenty-five. Long term, once the OS Church fence is painted, once the Ainsworth fence is up, whether it's wood or chain, we have no major projects in the future. We've got couple of small things, a couple of small fences that need to be painted, no big deal. When they are ready to come down, we'll put them up with chain. We can do it if we damn please. <laughs> <laughs> because we're not dealing with a historic district. So we hope with by 2027 to be down to nothing but routine maintenance. That being said, and so uh, far, no zombies have been sighted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nothing is a sight that we're aware of. We've got plenty of room in the foreseeable future left. We do. Um, yeah. 
I asked the sexton last year, we have a whole new cemetery, the Hudson Cemetery up on George Road, which has several hundred sites. Oh, and there are other sites available. And I think you told me that we have something in the order of 400 sites available, not counting those that are already sold that mm -hmm. are absorbed. And the Hudson Cemetery needs a fence, but we'll put up granite post and chain and chain for that. Yeah, yeah but that isn't going to be necessary for a while. No, there's only three burials in there at this point. Out of curiosity, how's the green burial program going? Very well. We're selling a lot of green burial plots. Um, I may get back to Carrie someday about that pile of debris in the Robinson Cemetery. That yeah, it's still there. Oh. Right. That's more a logistical problem than anything else. But... And is that just, that's just, that's relatively clean fill? Is that? I think somebody looked at it and said it could be used. Right now, there's trees like that growing up out of it. So. Oh, goodness. We may have to talk to the tree warden to cut them down before we can move the soil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any reason we couldn't stagger the, the two fence projects so that there's one next this coming year and one the following year? Or is there? Well, this the Ainsworth fence is 2026. Oh, okay. It won't get done till then. Right. Unless we find some money somewhere all of a sudden, which I would not expect. I think we have done a pretty good job of keeping the budget mm -hmm. just under 50000 for the past several years. We've tried. And that's with, with getting these projects done that needed to be done. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that I have been working with Carrie on a regular basis to get a monthly report. How much money did we have at the end of the last month? What came in? What went out? What have we got left? So we are keeping track of where our money is, which is something I don't think has been done a whole lot in the past. <laughs> I'm not blaming my predecessors. No, it's it's, it's been rather vague. I'm a newcomer here. I've only lived in Calus 40 years. <laughs> John, you got me beat by a few years. <laughs> I've been here 34. All right. Uh, Thank you. Michael, at one point there was an effort to um, start transitioning <laughs> records to the Nemeric system. Yeah. How's that going? It's not. It's stalled. It's, it's kind of stalled because the two people on the commission that were doing it are horrendously busy and have not had the time. Yeah. I'd like to see it go, but it's going to be a four or five year project. Yeah, yeah, that's the special project of the future. Right. And it'll be all by members of the commission who are doing it at no cost. So. Will that get easier with the, with the cloud-based Nemric? That's what I was going to say. There is a cost. It's $10 a month for that account that you all use. Um, so it's not a large cost, but we are paying 10 bucks a month for the cemetery commission to have a Nemric. The problem is going through all of the records and trying to find all of the, the deeds, the lot transfers, the, the burial records, so that somebody can say, you know, John C. Smith born such and such a day and say he's here. I'm not saying it's not a valuable project. I'm just saying, if you're like, if you think it's going to be six months or longer before they get started, we might put a pause on their um, subscription until they're ready to get started again. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Our pleasure. Thanks so much. Thank you. Uh, trails committee. Sure, they did not request any change. Okay. Or any, any mm -hmm. so no, We submitted $500. Yeah. Oh, we did? Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, you saw that, right? I did, yeah. It's in the folder. It's in the folder. And they have nothing. So, so they submitted $500, but tonight Tom Lashley, the trails chair, said they're going to withdraw that request. You can go back to zero. Because he had forgotten. Charlotte reminded him that they have their own trails fund from people who donate to trails throughout the year. And they've got money in there, so he said he forgot about that. So he's withdrawing the five hundred dollar request to go back to zero. Okay. Great. <laughs> you can pay to the zoning administrator. Yeah, that's <laughs> half of John's. I'm, I'm lost. What, what? 
So, so uh, Tom Lashley had submitted a five hundred dollar budget for trails for fiscal year twenty twenty six. We've never had a budget before. Exactly, right? and he forgot that yeah. until Charlotte reminded him tonight <laughs> that trails has its own little slush fund yeah. that you use, and so he withdrew the five hundred dollar request for for budget twenty fiscal year twenty twenty six. So there should be about twenty thousand. I mean, two thousand dollars of restricted funds, and the rest is unrestricted. I don't know those numbers. I don't know. Deep, deep and shaking. I don't, body I don't know whether it's legally restricted. But we were told not to spend it. Except not to spend it. Yeah. So that's yeah, and that's just a fund balance. That's not that's not necessarily a budget request. Right. Right. I, I can't see any need for a budget. Okay. Yeah. No budget. Um, I'm not. I'm, I'm not on the trails committee anymore. Of course, I still have an opinion vacation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair, dude. You're in good company. Uh, uh, Tegan. Uh, I was going to ask. Do you do you want me to go line by line? Do you want to hit the highlights? Do you have questions you want to start with? Uh, I think the hitting the highlights uh, would would be most appropriate. Uh, so um, with Barbara and me, I added a four percent increase. Carrie said that was the cost of living the town was looking at this year. That's what we're asking for is cost of living. But that's um, what the road crew's getting. That's what yes. the road crew's getting. Okay, that's what I figured. For Barbara, we Carrie and I broke down how many hours she spent on each role um, this past year and applied that much to. Um, each individual line item that's on there, including her overtime, so that's sort of a general estimate. It is lower than the prior because this is the year that Barbara we, we, that we came to the conclusion that she didn't need to work 40 hours a week every week to be considered full time and achieve benefits. So there will be times when things are slower, especially next year not being an election year, where she won't necessarily be there as often as she typically has in the past. So I feel this is a pretty good estimate of what the numbers are. Um, there is a line item for how much we would pay for under town meeting elections. I can't remember exactly where this was. Um, but it estimated how much it would cost if we use the tabulator for the election. As you know, in the BCA meeting, just prior to this, we voted not to use the tabulator. So the estimated cost of printing ballots. Barbara, what would you say if, we, if we're all just going to put them at the office? Less than $500. Yeah, less than 500 different ballots for town meeting. Was uh, that the tabulator coding? Coding and printing. So, yeah. Because that's 525 is what you have. Well, 525 is for the coding, and also we have to print using uh, a particular printing company to oh. get it appropriately set up so that it works with the tabulator, whereas if we don't use the tabulator, we can just print it on a regular printer, and that saves time and effort. Um, I suppose if you all wanted to mail ballots, we would also have to have that conversation, mail everyone town meeting ballots versus not. I don't know if the school board is going to request mailing all the ballots. I'm assuming they will because they did last year, but that, I don't know. Central Vermont Community College will probably not ask you because that's a logistical lift for them that I don't think they've taken on yet. So the, the 200 covers what mailing for what then? Is that for the town meeting postage? I'm, I'm confused. Um, I cannot remember what the town meeting, the, oh, the ballot postage. So the ballot postage, we did it with, um, we did it with the schools last time. We It all went in one mailing, and I'm trying to remember what that was, because I know I had it written down somewhere, and I can't recall it. Oh, this represents the cost of mailing one ballot to the village just one time. So that's the 200. Um, oh, yes. Uh, other changes. Um, in the up and near select board, Area. The second to last line is for volunteer committee appreciation. Uh, we tossed around a couple ideas in the town office. The last time this took place was a number of years ago, and it was a catered event. 
And it was very nice, but it was the estimate for now would be multiple thousands of dollars to pay for a catered event for all committees, boards, commissions, select board folks. I talked to the Friends of Callis at their meeting last week, and they said, I said, if Barbara and I do the logistics, we do the planning and the arranging and the collecting of volunteers for the event of, would they be willing to take on getting food donations from folks? So, you know, getting three salads and getting five entrees, and, get, and they said, yes, they would be happy to help get food for that event. Barbara and I would do logistics, and so, I think that number might need to go up a little bit now that I've talked to a few people. It might be safer to put 500, but we felt that 500 was a safe amount that we could do that sort of event. To thank all the boards and these commissions. And it's very nice when we were here to have our little mixer during the meet and greet when people were going to come see us, and instead it was just all of us. I enjoyed that, and so it'd be nice to have a time. <laughs> it was also impossible to hear it was. the conversation. Now, one year they did the volunteer appreciation in the um, the town garage. Uh, exactly. And a barbecue. And, and we that was quite nice. We haven't talked about where we would do it. We could certainly yeah. talk about doing it next year. Yeah. <laughs> um, just going down the list. Uh, I did add $200 under election workers. A lot of other towns pay their election workers, but they also spend, they have much longer shifts. Barbara and I work really hard to make sure most people aren't here more than two or three hours. Um, but a lot of the equity talk among the state is it's, it's good practice to at least offer gas cards or some sort of token something to people. And some towns say half the people turn them down, and it's not a thing, but just. It's, a, it's the right thing to do these days, so we were thinking we would purchase gas cards. Um, I know that there are grants out there for this kind of thing, so I'm going to try to get grants in the future, so it won't be a town budget item, but that's on the list. What happens if we budget for that and then they turn them down and we've got excess funds associated with that particular expense? You mean we've already purchased the cards, or we just have $200 we didn't spend? Yeah. We've already purchased the cards, I guess. I don't know. And I, I'm not, it doesn't have to be gas cards. I'm trying to think of an appropriate item. I would probably talk to the BCA. Car wash. About it. <laughs> um, that's all. We're one of the few towns that don't offer mm. food or payment or something. And I think it might be a good idea to offer something. Can I, can yes, I ask, what, what is their reasoning why it's appropriate to either pay or offer something? The same reason the question of stipend for select board came up is, if you want to get, there are people who maybe can't afford to do it. They would have to take time off work, or they couldn't afford the gas to get here, they couldn't afford the child care to do it. And so we are leaving those populations out of something that they might want to purchase. I know this was a big debate in Montpelier with their select board, I believe it was, about having a significant enough stipend if you needed to get child care for every select board meeting or something like that. Yeah. Uh, that was that item. Uh, I did some cleaning up with some of the budgeting, I think. I am still learning how to code invoices and how to put things in the appropriate spot. So some of the things we, it looks like we spend more or less on, I've dug around and found out exactly what we spent and moved things around to various other categories. So that's why you see some of these changing by a few hundred dollars one way or the other. Um, and it looks like you've uh, got some uh, feedback uh, from RB about uh, the savings that we realized with the... Yes, so I, it's not savings. It's okay. a readjusting of allocations. So gotcha. all we would need to have in adding to our the technology reserve fund is basically what we'd want to pay for, what, what it would cost to replace three of our devices or a quarter of our devices mm -hmm. every year. Um, so those are going to be two to three thousand dollars per laptop. I've got sixty five hundred in here. Um, I'm not sure what is you know tech is a hard thing to anticipate this far out. Uh, but the subscriptions at this point, he and I tossed around numbers and fees and what everything's going to cost. And I think six thousand dollars a year for some software is a ballpark. I can't promise that that's accurate. There's just 
everything's changing all the time, and it's <coughs> lots of little niggly ten dollars here, six dollars there. Uh, it's harder to track. I, I think that my <clears throat> a bigger question uh, might be worth having a little later in the budgeting process would be whether or not. Um, Specifically, I think like the select board members or others who have a full license um, would be able to go down to uh, one of the lesser licenses, um, which uh, as I've gotten more comfortable with the resources, um, I think is a real possibility. Um, uh, so we can kind of table that. That could be several hundred dollars of savings a, a year for sure. Um, and may afford us the opportunity to, you know, obviously save it or apply it to some of the other commissions who may need a dedicated basic license or something like that, yeah. which and we've uh, already started talking about. We are work, architect is currently working on getting planning their license. Hopefully, it should be done this week. If it's not already, I haven't gone through all of today's emails. Great. I'm just noticing something, Tegan, the yes. um, select board asked us to restore the reserve fund allocations. To what they had been prior to last year. Okay. Yeah, so I'm noticing the, the very last line on this town hall reserve fund. Yep. Should put to that back. back to and then we'll see where it all shakes out. Okay. Um, another note on general things is uh, <coughs> Kari and I have talked to CB Fiber and to the security folks, and it looks like we should be able to do the fire security that we do here at the town office on CB Fiber's phone lines mm -hmm. instead of Consolidated's phone lines which is good because Consolidated's prices have been creeping up all year and yeah. they're sort of phenomenal right now. Um, and CB fibers are still very reasonable, so we are working with CB fiber right now. Uh, as they merged with NEK fiber, they said that their two gig internet is going up a certain amount and their one gig internet is going down a certain amount. So ours basically stayed the same between the town hall and the town office. It, one budget went up and one budget went down, but if you add it all together, it's actually about the same amount of money every month. So why didn't you give Kari a raise? Uh, because I didn't think that that was my jurisdiction to put in that line item. I see, okay. We didn't talk specifically, this is mine, this is yours, this is mine, I see. this is yours. Okay, so, so there's still some things to There's do still here. some things okay. in here that I thought were more treasurer, town administrator yeah. type things. Okay. Um, mostly under select board. And treasury. And Kara, if you want to send them to me, I can work on them. I just sort of thought they were. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll get the, uh, the rest of the pieces in maybe next, next time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tegan. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. A, a great first pass um, and really, really helpful. Um, <laughs> they want to transition to the highway department? Yeah, yeah. let's go. <laughs> it's a little bit different story. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is far from a, a finalized product. This is a first pass. And I, I think just seeing the scale, uh, the scope of what we're talking about is why I wanted to get started early. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, let me see. Let me put my notes up here. So, um, first pass is a 27% increase on what's half our budget. And I think, just to give you the headline, I think there's three key drivers here. One is medical insurance. And you'll see that again when we update um, um, the office side. But the Blue Cross rates are up over 23%. And just factoring that in with assumptions about what our you know, road crew roster will be and what kinds of insurance, um, we're looking at a, a hefty increase of almost 50%. Uh, medical insurance alone, uh, $36,000. Uh, so I did, I did get some um, renewal information from MVP is the only other carrier in the state that does these small, small group plans uh, like what we're on. Um, they are running about 10% less, I, but I need to do an analysis to understand uh, because they have different deductible and out-of-pocket levels. Mm -hmm. with, and with our arrangement, the town is on the hook for them. For the um, for all those kinds of expenses, so it's not a straight. There will be some assumptions in that analysis, but um, I want to make sure that you know some portion of that ten percent savings would would not would, would be chewed up by this other expense. So 
I'll figure that out. And then, and then the other things to consider would be the network that MVP offers. I assume it's good in Vermont, but I don't know that. And, um, and then service. And I know there's been a lot of discussion on the um, online chat the, uh, the clerks have about who's on MVP. Okay. And, there's a number of towns that have made the switch, but there's there's some strong opinions too. So, and, and in, in terms of our road crew, we're required to offer the Blue Cross Gold Plan or its equivalent, and that's MVP offers an equivalent. But I just want you to know that. So that's one. Then we have a number of new capital expenses on on the um, docket for next year. So the Greater Bond start repaying that and. The 2025 Western Star dump truck, which is a topic we're going to return to in a, in a few minutes. Um, and only the chipper came off, the wood chipper, which was a relatively small capital item. So, I mean, that's an increase of $68,000 to the capital budget um, alone, and we're already committed to those items. Uh, and then the third category of big increases would be grant projects, grant funded projects, the town's contribution to them. Mm -hmm. And there are two in this budget. One is the loose road culvert. This is, the, you know, so this is a this is a grant that we've had for a while. We recently got an extension on it. it the culvert needs to be upgraded to a 66 inch culvert. It's, so it's, almost, it's basically like almost a bridge. Yeah. Um, so it's a $250,000 project is what it was estimated at. Um, the town would need to contribute uh, well, we only need to contribute 10%, but the maximum amount of the grant is $200,000. So that's a $50,000 contribution from the, from the town. The good news about that one is it is it was extended to t December of 2026, so we could defer that one for a year. The other one is the Kent Hill Road French Mattress Project, which if you're not familiar with that one, is that the flats part, mm -hmm. where, which is basically uh, bounded by wetlands on both sides, mm -hmm. it's a it's just a ongoing challenge, right? And a French mattress is a road bed design. I understand with large um, rock in built into the red, road bed so that the water can pass through mm -hmm. more easily. Um, that one is a hundred fifty thousand dollar project, more or less, and um, we need to contribute, I believe, twenty percent to that. So um, and that and that. Grant needs to be um, ex the funds need to be expended by December of next year. So that we'll, if we're going to do that project, it needs to be in, in the next nice budget. budget. Mm -hmm. So um, there are a lot of places within this that we need to sharpen up. Obviously, we're not any anywhere. We're not going to end up anywhere near twenty seven percent. But I wanted to get get this going so you could you could see it. I guess the other thing I would say is that we took a hard look at the maintenance line items, gravel in, in specific, and so I went back over the last five years, which is how long we've been using the Nemeric accounting software, just to see what have we been spending on gravel, sand, erosion stone, and all the rest. And so that spreadsheet is in there. You can see how it varies. Far By far and away, last year was, was the big gravel year. That was because we had all those mud seasons through through the winter, and the quarries were allowed to remain open because of the flooding the summer before. Mm -hmm. So we had the need, and the supply was also there. No, we won't necessarily have those two things. Mm -hmm. Nonetheless, we you know, given we spent one hundred and forty thousand on gravel last year, I took the budget to a hundred thousand. You know, because that didn't seem that didn't seem outrageous. Um, but it, 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 it would be quite a bit more than we spent in, in years prior to last year. Well, if I remember correctly, we've been playing a little bit of a shell game with the gravel and other expenses. <laughs> to Rose's point, point. Uh, yeah, um, which, you know, is probably not serving us well, or at, at the very least, it's not representing the reality of the situation. Um, this, is, this might be... You might not have the answer to this, but um, the chloride, I'm looking at yeah. the, uh, the material expenses, um, that seems like highly variable. So in like, uh, it went in like FY20, it went from like 9,000 to 29,000, back down to uh, 19,000. 
Um, are, are we still spreading that with, is that like an in-bed spread uh, sprayer or is that yeah. a trail? And this year, uh, for the first time, we're, we are leasing that, um, the tank the spr the sp yeah. that, that, that holds it um, from Innovative, who's the vendor that we buy that fluoride from. I think what helps to explain the variability there is there's a timing issue. You. Some years, I think that they start spreading the chloride earlier in the summer, which falls in one fiscal year. Mm -hmm. This year, I know all the chloride application came after July, mm -hmm. and it and it was significant. It was you know we're, we're probably going to end up around thirty thousand this year, I believe, for chloride. It's five thousand dollars a a load, and we just we applied a lot. I, I, I can't explain. So, well, some of that has to do with the grant and aid work. That because they they, did, they redid a lot of road segments, maybe more than typical. I, I think that's true. Um, I, I, I have a hard time, as you can tell, fully explaining the chloride story. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not as familiar uh, with its application. Uh, I, I know that it's uh, relative to um, trying to keep the dust down, um, particularly in dry yeah. in dry stretches. Um, and, this year uh, and how much of that's associated dry. with like, yeah, this, yeah, the, well, this fall was especially dry, but the, the summer wasn't. Um, summer was not. Um, I'm curious, I guess, whether or not, uh, again, getting back to like kind of the scope of, the scope of work that the road crew needs to perform on a regular basis, are there, are there contract companies that you can, so that we're, we could, not lease the unit that we have and just hire them to apply uh, at the direction of the road crew? I don't know. I'm not sure about that. I, it, you know, one of the things about chloride is that they're doing it in conjunction with grading, especially when it's dry. So I don't know that you'd have the flexibility if you were contracting it out. I, 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 don't, I just don't know. We're going to look into it. I think the place where contractor comes in um, one of the big ones is with that grant supported work. So if we were going to do the French mattress project, decision needs to be made. Do we hire that out mm -hmm. and contribute dollars, or do we have our road crew do it and contribute as an in-kind expense? And I think that's that's an important decision. We're basically committed to paying our road crew for operating equipment. It depends on what projects they're doing. Um, I guess, you know, this year, seeing what happened this year between the July flood and all the grant and aid work, that was basically the special projects that we got done this year. So, uh, you know, I'm wary of taking on, taking on too much, uh, given the weather that we have these days. But if we're looking to save money on the French mattress project, one way to do that is have our crew do it versus contracting it out. Yeah, I would. Uh, I'd I, I don't disagree. I think if, if we were to decide that, I would I would say that it would be I would feel most comfortable if we put tight controls over you know what what portions of that they were applying their time to, um, knowing that a that's a pretty specialized application, um, and b uh, the material that is going to be needed for the bottom portion is going to be pretty rough on the trucks, and uh, it'd be it'd be way more desirable to have somebody else doing like the hauling of stuff that's not beating up on our trucks so, um, so yeah. much. Um, so I think that that mm -hmm. project, if we were going to do it ourselves, we would want to really make sure that we have very clear and explicit expectations with the with the road crew uh, about, you know, how their time and equip our equipment is being applied to that, that particular project. Yeah. Um, that's my caveat on that one. Uh, yes, Barbara, and then Mr. Lilly. Okay, I have a quick question. So since you mentioned the loose road culvert, yeah. I'm going to be sound like a broken record, but I want to ask again about the adamant culvert, because I, I remember two or three meetings after the July 2023 flooding when both Ann Tulin and Toby talked about how woefully undersized the adamant culvert is and 
I'm wondering if that's considered for fiscal yep. year 26. It's uh, sort of sort of in the pipeline of future projects. The first step with these is usually requesting a hydraulic study of the state. So one was requested for that location, and, and another one I'm not remembering. Bliss Pond, maybe? Yeah, Bliss, thank you, Bliss Pond Road, um, which are two places that washed out in 23 and 24. We just added Martin Road um, to that list. So these, you know, once we know what s size of culvert we're dealing with or, or some structure, then we can pursue the grants that will help us pay for these because these are not small things. It's like the like the loose road we're talking, you know, in the area of quarter million dollars. The hydrological studies are those. It seems like we didn't have to pay for the for the handful that were in response to emergencies when they came this, up. But this, that's a service the state provides. Okay. Yeah. Um, the one that was done on Elmsley this year was was in. June um, and was provided within a week, I think. It was right. kind of amazing to me. The other ones, I think, happening post July yeah. flooding, um, it could be a while. Yeah. But this, that's a state, that, and I think that they, you know, it's just the service they provide. Doug, did you have a yeah. comment to um, register? I know I, I, last year, two years ago, I talked to the uh, Army Corps of Engineers in the Atlantic. And they got special dirt that they have to put on the road so they won't be so dusty. Oh, uh, what is that? I don't know that. Uh, well, so that, that's actually uh, an interesting uh, point. Uh, there, there are reinforced um, uh, grade, like uh, finished grade material, um, yeah. and uh, they're basically like milling machines that you drag behind a tractor um it's like similar to a road milling machine so they've got like carbide teeth and then they have tanks and injectors uh that go on them that inject the uh the either chloride or at some in some cases i think it's like lime it's like a binder and it stabilizes the road bed um, you probably roll it it's way more popular in uh in europe um, and, but you're starting to see more of these like land reclamation, land reclamation. Um, and it doesn't kill the trees so much. Right? It, and it stabilizes the road quite a bit um, because you're not having to put regular treatments down on the road bed that then wash off. It is it is actually so, like solidifying the road. The, the top of the road bed. Yeah. Um, is anyone in Vermont doing it? Uh, well, so uh, not many, um, but I did just recently hear from a friend who uh, uh, I, I think there's uh, an excavator out of Northfield who has one of these milling machines. I mean, what frankly, from my perspective, I think it would be amazing if the state would run a program to like start testing some of this stuff and make recommendations to the town to mm -hmm. start adopting I know. some of these procedures. I got but. Trees from, from, from. <clears throat> Tucker Road down to the school on my land is dying. 19 trees, maple trees. And that's from the chloride and all that stuff being put on. Now I know the, the, uh, the manager of, uh, manager over there, I can't think what his name is. He had a, he did all the signs, he did it himself, instead of grants, and, you know, from the state on stop signs and that kind of stuff. And the other day, I counted all the signs that stopped uh, uh, speed signs that we need on Lightning Ridge Road. I counted them all the way up through, and I counted eight. We need eight, and we don't need the poles. Uh, can we save that one for a second, Doug? Because yeah. that, that's on. We're we're going to get to that okay. one and, and talk about it. So we'll we'll save. The wife's going to go sleep on me. Yeah? Speed up. Uh, <laughs> <away. It, laughs> Feel free to sleep. We'll wake you up when it's, uh, when it's come to times that. Um, uh, so if I can, if, I mean, I think it would be great if we could figure out a way to like run a grant program or something uh, to like do a segment of road and test some of that stuff yeah. because mm -hmm. like it's uh, there are forestry services that are using it, like uh, commercial forestry services, and they're doing it for a lot of dirt roads in Europe yeah. right now. But I'll check anyway, the local roads. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, was there anything else on the on the highway uh, budget that we wanted to 
zero in on for now or, uh, or just ruminate on how substantial it is? <laughs> yeah, I thought you might sleep on that. <laughs> I, I certainly will. You know, and yeah. Keep, keep working on it. I mean, I think the, the uh, it's frustrating. Uh, there's, there's only so many areas where I feel like you can save money, and that just pales in comparison to the increases. Um, but I appreciate the time in presenting realistic expenses. Um, it's interesting to see, uh, <coughs> see what we can discover with the insurance premiums. Yeah. Bananas. Um, and I think that's it for budgeting. Is that right, yeah, Kari? Yep. Discussion of next steps. Yeah. Well, next steps are uh, the next slate of uh, of committees. Uh, Barbara, do you have uh, the list of the next slate? I didn't bring that with me, but. Uh, we only have two more weeks. We have the October 28th and November 11th, so it's basically half and half. Yeah. I don't have it with me, I'm no. sorry. No, that's fine. But uh, everybody's booked. Okay. Um, and as far as uh, next steps for the rest of it, how, Kari, how do you think you want to break, break down any, any further refinement of, of these numbers? Over the next couple of weeks, do we want to just have a standing? Yeah, it's the we'll same continue standing on this process where we're hearing from the committees and commissions we haven't heard from yet. Um, I'll keep working on the highway department. Um, I'll, I'll incorporate everything that we did tonight. And I would say by the end of the next meeting, we're getting fairly close to a, a comprehensive first draft. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to have to get down to some difficult discussions, I would imagine. Um, but let's see. Let's see. Let's see where it shakes out. Okay. Um, Did we sense. sell anything? <laughs> <laughs> Are we not using any streams? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so root, uh, road crew hiring. Um, yeah. Um, so yeah, we're um, very excited to recommend uh, Drew Lasik, Andrew Lasik. We John and I interviewed him. He sort of came out of nowhere. He's a recent transplant to Vermont um, and has got quite a bit of experience uh, truck driving. He's got a CDL, got all the you know, certifications that we need. Um, has worked uh, on road crews. Does he not, doesn't oper operate a grader. He's never done that. He's done everything else. Uh, and we were pretty frank with him about winter in Vermont, and he's been living in Connecticut, so okay. not that far away, but a different, yeah. lot more pavement, that's for sure. Um, and he's just, he's just a very high energy, personable, um, uh, with a good amount of experience. And they're, they're, you know, him and his wife are looking to put down roots here. They're one of them building a house out in Cabot, so. Just, Cabot? Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's, that's our recommendation. Great. Great. <laughs> and uh, do we have to officially approve the hire? Of yeah, you're hiring. Yeah. yeah. We are hiring him. I don't have that authority. And with that, we'll have a full road crew, right? Again. Um, so we're budgeted for five full-timers. We have, we'll have four <laughs> plus and half-time. Plus whatever we can get out of Bill. <laughs> John wants me to plow. <laughs> so, we're yeah, feeling pretty good. Not exactly sure what Ed, Ed's going to do this winter. He, he's not sure if he's up for plowing. Mm -hmm. Do we but have four, four full time can get the job done? Like, do we have uh, some anybody in our back pocket as an emergency for covering that last half? Or uh, part time for right. plowing? No, I wouldn't say that. Yeah. Um, I mean, if, if Ed can do it half time, I think works pretty well, actually. Yeah. That, that was the secret to our success last year. Yeah. We had two half timers that mm -hmm. like flexible with mm -hmm. working during the storms and all yeah. that. But this new person, he can He's, plow? 
He can plow, yeah, and, and he's full time and he understands the hours and yeah. Great, great, thank you. Well, with that, I would entertain a motion to uh, approve the official hiring of Andrew uh, Lasik to a full time position on the road crew. So moved. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, thanks, Kari. Um, oh, dump trucks. So the dump truck. So this is a, a truck that was approved over a year ago. I know because it was before I started. Um, so the order was placed back then. Uh, the chassis will be ready sometime in November, and then the body won't be ready till the spring. So we won't actually take possession of it till the spring. However, we, we will get a five thousand dollar discount if we. If we purchase it or finance it um, now. And, so, and start making payments right away? Uh, not for a year. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so I reached out to, um, who we've done financing with recently, couple, the, the two firms, uh, and KS State Bank had the better proposal. Uh, I was hoping that the rates had come down more, but it's still at 5.8%. Mm. So it's, uh, you know, significant amount of money, um, but it is what it is. I put the um, total amount in the budget. I don't have the breakdown of interest and principal, but it's, um, let me pull it up. That was in the budget, though. Is it the highway department budget? Mm -hmm. It is under uh, capital. So you are seeking authority to sign the agreement? Sign the agreement to finance. The total is, uh, annual payments is 53600 and change for five years. So the select board has the authority to borrow for up to five years without requesting or seeking town approval. So the only one we're retiring is the chipper, so our capital highway budget's going to go up quite a lot. Yeah, that's why I was referring to that as a factor, you know, one of the big drivers yeah. in this budget. Yeah. And, and, you know, not to blame anybody, but that's, you know, that's why we have a multi-year capital budget so we can spread these things out. Yeah, I think right. what happened we're is making we, up for we put off a little yeah, bit and now we're... We're, we're stacking up a few things. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we won't need another, well, I'm going to speak to that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know which truck we're going to retire? Or we keep it on? Yeah, we're trading in the 2014. That's part of the acquisition of okay. the oldest one, yeah. We always keep one as a spare mm -hmm. in case we need it, and then also for trading value. Okay. Is there any weighing of like which one we decide to trade in and when? Uh, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, it, it, what's frustrating, I think, is it seems like it, we, and it, you know, we've heard, we've heard it now from like the fire department, we've experienced it ourselves, we get a brand new vehicle that then ends up going down. Um, and uh, the reliability seems to be like hit or almost hit or miss. Um, uh, on these extremely expensive vehicles. Um, so trading in something that may have a higher short-term value, uh, but is m less reliable um, than hanging on to something that's more reliable for, for reserve, uh, just to soften the I, blow. But I, I don't know how reliable the old one is at this point. Yeah. It's definitely past its expected life. Mm. We, 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 we plan for these things the last seven years, and this mm -hmm. one is 10. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Used to be five years. Really? Um, yeah. It's all the pollution control technology, blah, blah, blah. They don't last. It's, it's called <laughs> DIP or DEF or whatever it is. Pollution controls. Yeah, it's DEF. Death fluid. Um, okay. Well, we've got to uh, a decision to approve uh, the uh, the 
financing from KC Bank for the purchase of the truck. Uh, KS Bank. Or I'm sorry, uh, KC, KS. Yeah. Uh, I'd entertain a motion to approve that financing for a total of, what was the total on the financing? We should probably note that. $27,000. $80. Is that what you want, the total amount to be borrowed? Or the payments or the interest rate? Or? Well, we should note the total amount being borrowed and I think the uh, the interest rate. Okay, hold on a second. Sent it to us, it's 5.84%. Yeah. Sorry, uh, two hundred and twenty seven thousand and eighty dollars, five point eight four percent, five year repayment with the first payment coming in uh, October of 25. And that's a five year? Yeah. All right, so there'd be a, a motion uh, to enter into financing for the purchase of a new truck uh, for $227,080 uh, at a rate of 5.8% for five years and starting on October 25th. So moved. And uh, second. second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Great, thanks. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, thanks. Um, when, when's the delivery on that again? Just, just... So uh, uh, the body, uh, the entire package won't be ready until the spring. But we're getting a five thousand dollar discount. Start financing it now. Mm -hmm. um, can can these things be refinanced? I guess if they if the rates drop substantially. Uh, that's a good question. I'll ask. I don't know about that. I mean, because I think they're looking at like another another half percent yeah. before the end of this year. Yeah. Things start to move. It, I it, guess before it, the it end came of the down year. almost a quarter from yeah. when I initially asked, but I was hoping for the full half percent. This is not how it works. Or I wonder if they can be bundled. Can we bundle all of these into something and like create our own tranche <laughs> for a better rate? <laughs> Let's start packaging our own loans. Mm. Uh, okay. Um, uh, so Curtis, or I'm sorry, the uh, traffic ordinance uh, revision. Uh, so last time we met, we yeah. laid out a, a plan, which we had talked about earlier tonight. Uh, ordinance Advisory Committee consider a number of different ordinance change recommendations uh, leading up to road ordinances, including the traffic ordinance, I think. Um, Mike requested that we consider, uh, the subword consider a fast tracking a change to the speed limit. Um, section of the traffic ordinance, um, specifically Lightning Ridge Road, which is one of the ones that we have a speed study done this year. So, um, Jordan and I discussed that, it seemed a reasonable thing to discuss, and if, as long as we're doing that, um, signage in Adamant Village, which is also covered by the traffic ordinance, would be something that has been brought up many times, and pretty clearly an issue there. Um, so those are the two things that are sort of on the table at, at this point in terms of fast tracking and ordinance change. So and Tegan provided a, a process. So what what would happen is the select board adopt an ordinance change and you post that publicly and give it 44 days. And if there's a petition to disapprove, then it's put to a town wide vote. Um, so yeah, that that would be, I guess, my my proposal. We've we've heard uh, quite a bit about uh, the issues on on Lightning Ridge. Uh, the other big um, consideration for me would be the signage uh, that we would want to uh, budget for, and whether or not we have we have a, we have funds to cover that. And 
Cry, were you able to find pricing for signage? I did. I did. Uh, I also did a count on Lightning Ridge, um, and uh, I got to uh, five signs that are existing that would need replacing, but then considered uh, we'd probably want to add uh, probably at least another two. Um, I counted eight. eight. Were those all of the speed limit signs, or were those just the no, 35? No, I counted two of those on the on Lightning Ridge Road. Now, there's one you might have a frag from the come out of the school. It's a 30 mile an hour. And somebody, right. shot the, shot, somebody shot the hell out of it. Yeah. And then there's one up by uh, Tucker, Tucker Road that they painted. You get that one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there's a couple down by my place that I want them there. Yeah, the, I counted the I, the permanent one, and then there are the digital ones. Yeah, do uh, they, so do they change? Can you change the dip speed limit on them? Uh, we can change the speed limit on uh, on them, and uh, this could be a separate conversation. But uh, you know, I think it makes sense to have one stay there relative to the need for measuring regularly what the traffic patterns are on that road. But we had been talking about moving at least one of those digital signs yeah. so that we can use it for traffic studies on other roads that still need to be taken into consideration. But um, the yeah, proposal the, the, is to- The plan you approved was to move the one facing uphill going yeah. up down to the school. Down to the school. Where the safety was. Right. Right. Um, so anyway, so whether it's five signs or eight, um, 46.50 is the current going rate for a 30 mile an hour speed limit sign. Now we have the poles, right? We tell us we do take two boats out. We don't, are you buying the poles too? We don't need to buy them. Uh, no, but I, I think it'd be relative to making a speed limit change sign, it would make sense to probably take the opportunity to put at least a couple of other new signs in to note that, particularly, I think we're George Road. Uh, right now, there isn't really anything on either side of George yeah, Road right. in either direction. So we should likely have one on there for anybody coming off of George Road and making left or right. Um, uh, so that's that's two signs um, uh, in addition to the, so in addition to the five. five. So seven signs and probably two two posts. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't think we can reuse the 30 well, mile an hour one. I, took the sign, I counted the signs going down the hill by my place. There's yeah. those two speed signs right on that. Going down, down by the school, I mean down the top of the hill, and one up, up by, um, I counted it. Um, we'll double check the number, so let's get a, an estimate, I guess, on the cost. But, but before but, we even go there, shouldn't we talk about whether or not we agree to the Yes. That's a good idea. Well, the cost might be The more you sign the bike and then you get them cheaper, okay. you get a better deal. I don't think so. Uh, that, was, that was a lot cheaper than I thought they were going to be, frankly. Put up 40 of them. Don't try it, maybe that's a little more. <laughs> Every 20 feet? Might <laughs> so. <laughs> Better off. It's flashing. Uh, so you know, I think that there's the there's a, the discussion about the sign costs um, at you know at eight at eight signs uh, that would be three hundred seventy two dollars. Um, That's nothing. Right. That's nothing. But it's you know, it's nothing. I, I I hear you there. Um, there's. With something like this, I think that uh, we've had this conversation a bunch, and uh, really, I think it's likely going to come down to enforcement. Like, so we're taking this opportunity uh, to have this discussion because we did have a traffic study. Uh, we did right. look at the uh, at the volume of traffic and the speed at which uh, it was uh, that traffic was traveling at, and. Uh, the the rate was split uh, between the 30 and the 35, and so uh, Michael's. Uh, Help me out here. What do you mean it was? I, I'm forgetting. So the two the the two most significant tranches of uh, uh, of travelers uh, were the majority split between 35 and 30 miles an hour. Um, the higher was 30. I believe. And the higher was on Lightning Ridge specifically. The higher, the higher 
average speed was in the 30 mile an hour. Uh, you did that. The higher number of drivers. Yeah. The higher number of you drivers. You took that study right when we were in middle school. You took that study. That was planned. That, I didn't like that. Yeah, but that's fine. Well, that, that, that benefits well, it's good your cause. It's good for you. Yeah. It's good for that benefits the cause here. That's what you tell me. Well, why do you want to lower it? I'm going to go up there and set my day and just drive back and forth five miles an hour. Are you saying that you want to raise it? No, I want to lower it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the study supports lowering it to 30 yes. miles an hour. Correct. Thank you. Well, here's, here's all the, something that concerns me. And you're saying during the school year they drive faster. Oh yeah. Now one of the reasons for having these studies and insisting that we stick to them is if you put the speed limit too low, people will try to pass under potentially more dangerous conditions than they would if it were slower. Um, so that's just a concern to me. If you say that people are driving faster at a different time of year, um, are they going to start engaging in more dangerous driving? I don't think so. It's hard to pass on the this road. As I was telling Cardi, it is the speeders usually got in school buses sometimes, and, and dump trucks seem to have to think it's a racetrack. They're going, you right. guys are going down the road, they're, by the, not, not the town trucks necessarily, but the private, let's say, Lodge and S company was on the other day. Nice guy waving at me. Oh. <laughs> uh, he was going really, really fast. And, and, the bridge breaking all the time. Yeah. So the bottom line is, you know, you can't really, you can't pass on that road. Uh, I don't think it's a I, I, I think most people are reasonable. Uh, you'll see them going in the 30 mile an hour, sometimes 35. But there are some yahoos who don't have any sense, and the other ones you got to watch out for. 30 may slow them down to a little more. I mean, it, it, it can't hurt. And studies, studies, you know, people live on Lightning Ridge Road. We, Peking Brook Road has uh, three houses. They have, they have 30 miles an hour. Uh, we. But, but as I understand it, during the school year, the, the issue is that everybody's running late and trying to get their kids to school. Is that right. what I'm understanding? They'll get up earlier. Well, maybe. Or maybe they'll just <laughs> maybe get more out. frustrated and do something dangerous. No, that's what they'll I'm get a speeding ticket. I'll take care of that. I'm serious. Uh, well, it, it does. It, then you can't worry about that. If that's the case, just limit the speed limit. Let them go down as fast as they want. And cause they're gonna, they're, I just disagree. I think we need to have a speed limit. We have to enforce it. For okay, me, it's a fair speed limit. I, know, I like 25, but I'm real, that's not realistic. Well, but 30 is fine. Yeah. So, so I'd, I'd like to kind of rein things back in a little bit. Um, what we really wanted uh, to make sure that we did when we were uh, taking up the uh, traffic ordinance uh, adjustments was making sure that we were making, you know, taking a, a fairly deliberate approach to looking at the traffic patterns and, and taking into consideration the average speeds um, and, and the volume of traffic that um, is being represented there. The, the statute obviously takes uh, into consideration other things that might come up uh, that that might want to like weigh into that consideration, and I think two two of those one one of which has been brought up is that that uh, Lightning Ridge has uh, more curb cuts and uh, more road entrances than uh, some of the other ones, uh, some of the other roads that have been brought up for uh, review on uh, on speed limits. Um, so I think that warrants uh, a. A, a modest reduction that is in line with the average speeds of the majority of the individuals who are traveling on that road. Um, and and it also has a school on it. Um, and, and two farms on that road. And, and two farms as well. Thank you, Doug. Um, so, I, you know, I think, I think making this modification to, uh, to the traffic ordinance is, is Rational. Uh, we've gone through a uh, a reasonable amount of consideration and measuring it and, and tracking these changes. Uh, we're looking at a budget and what it's going to cost to uh, to add to add signs, which is nominal. I think the bigger question here is in this process of considering these changes, do we want to uh, consider the uh, the increases that we want to apply to? Uh, enforcement and increasing the the uh, 
the budget that we're going to have with the sheriff's department to specifically target enforcement. Um, and that, that I think also needs to be a lot brought into play. We just don't have our taxes raised a little bit to make sure that people have speed. I mean, that's stupid to put a sign out there and they just go, boom. I mean, every morning, every night I see this, all day long. Did he just say that we should raise taxes? I think he's advertising. I'm for raise taxes. My taxes are goddamn heavy. Uh, okay. uh, well, because that's what it would be if we were hiring, you know, more patrols, yeah. right? The question is, is that part of responsibly lowering the speed limit so that it will be effective? I think it's just responsibly enforce the speed limit. I think I think it's it's a it's part of just responsible enforcement. You know, it, it, it's a, for me that's a, that's almost a a separate conversation. Um, I, I wonder how much of this would be a dialogue if we had an adequately funded enforcement yeah. <laughs> budget. Yeah. Um, and and that's I think what you know right now we. We were focusing on a handful of roads, Lightning Ridge, uh, you know, appropriately. Um, there's data to support making a modification. There are other roads in the community that are at 30 miles an hour. We need to upgrade the signs on a number of roads. Uh, this, uh, this does not seem like uh, too much of a heavy lift or substantial inappropriate precedent that we're setting by, uh, by, making, uh, by taking this up. For consideration early in advance to the, uh, the ordinance committee, um, they can always come back and take a more comprehensive look at the ordinance if they need to, um, or if we feel like they should. But um, that I'm, I'm lobbying for making making that adjustment for Lightning Ridge. Yeah, I'm generally in favor. We don't have just process wise. We don't have a draft. Do we have draft language? Change for the ordinance. Like if we're going to do it tonight, we yeah. Uh, we haven't. If done you looked that. at the traffic ordinance, it's just it's, a list of right, roads exactly. With the speed limit, and then if there's stop signs, or right. Signs. But I suppose we could tonight if we wanted to. We could say change. Authorize. I could draft it. Car and back to you. The other thing we haven't talked about, Adamant. Right. And so, yeah. um, you know, the, the issue in Adamant is there are three, you know, for callous, significant roads merging mm -hmm. into one intersection. There's no signage. There, there's really, there's no signage. So um, there are good, reasonably good lines of sight, but um, there is also a parking lot there. Mm -hmm. And while, while we were standing there the other day, Chris and I and Ruben from the Regional Planning Commission, there are trucks, large trucks unloading into the co-op. Mm -hmm. So. It, you know, it's it's something where it seems appropriate to 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 do something to direct traffic to warn people. Um, so Ruben is a transportation planner. He is going to go back and sort of dig into <clears throat> regulation to see if you know you know what else needs to be considered. And he's and they're willing to do. Um, speed and volume studies like they've done on our other roads, but they wouldn't do those till the spring, so they may not want to wait. But his initial reaction was a yield sign coming into the village from Agate Road, because that's the place that's tightest and there's a little bit of a, a curve there. Um, and then um, pedestrian, warning pedestrian signs on all three roads coming in. And then we already have a plan to put two uh, speed detection signs on Haggett and and Adamant. So that all that together should make a difference. So that's interesting. I, so one of the things that we <laughs> that's come up is the speed of travelers coming down Haggett Road into into the village. So why wouldn't we want that to be a stop sign to stop people as they're approaching? If you're coming up into an intersection into a village area where you've got a yield versus a stop, it seems like it seems like you would want them to stop on that particular road. I know by volume and by priority, if the rest of that intersection had stop signs, Haggett would be an appropriate one to have like the yield sign because who would they be who would they be yielding to? 
who would be taking priority? It's, it's just left-hand turns is your, is your main concern. Basically, you just want people to drive slowly through there. There's, it's pretty wide, um, you know, uh, and there's decent lines of sight. Mm. It's just, I think the biggest concern is if someone's making a left turn, so yield, I don't think you have to necessarily come to a full stop. Um, or if there happens to be a lot of you know, pedestrian traffic or unusual amount of trucks or something like that. You know, it just puts them on notice. I, I, it, yeah, yeah. 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 It, it's, it's basically a calming yeah. effect. But, but Curry, you're saying he is that's studying. The he's studying it. I, that's, not his, that's not his yet. final recommendation. Yeah. So I think a, I think a question is how long do we, do we wait? Yeah. And, and, you know, probably two weeks from now we'll have something from him, but it, maybe he'll, he'll want to take longer. I don't know. So maybe, maybe the thing to do is I can draft the change to the speed limit portion and then we can wait for a uh, response from Ruben and re revisit this in two weeks. Yeah, I think that... I think we don't that need sense. to change an ordinance to add a yield sign, do we? Yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. we do. Okay. But not the pedestrian sign. Right. right. Yields and stops are in there. Okay. In the does anybody feel strongly about having a stop down at the end of Kent Hill? Added. I'm against it. Okay. Of what? Haggett Road? No. No, right out here. Oh. I mean, it's another one that's come up many times. The yield sign. I do have. It's de facto legal anyway. Right. I have a, a good memory of Haggett from 10 or 12 years ago, it was approved to have a stop sign there, and it never got installed. How about we see what we do with a yield versus stop sign right here, down yeah. here, and then if we need to move a yield or stop sign, <laughs> yeah. and we have one in the inventory, we move it over here. Yeah, I, I think it was an accident there. Um, but anyway, I did, do want to see- Did it get incorporated into the ordinance? Like, I mean, I'll check. Yeah, but you're saying that it should be. It should in be in there if it's. Mm. Yeah. But but it's all by number, so I don't know what any yeah, roads are right, here. Right. Oh, I see it. Yeah, we have a list of stop intersections. Yeah, and then the speed limits, and then the yields are after that. Got it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. And I can get you the. Forty six is Lightning Ridge. You did about. say that in the memo, and actually, the rest of it, I was like, actually, that one that with the town <laughs> highway numbers. Yep. Wow. Jamie, okay. wasn't it your suggestion to put the name well, of the road in the Well, we want to know what this one is, where we're going yes. there might Which, well, we can do that. I'm looking now so at the, the one that the last know. select board it's, passed um, at their last meeting. And then oh, we is, didn't have go into effect, and, and, and that was yeah. one of the changes that they did. So that draft. Okay, so Town Highway 46, we can't understand what you say what. Highway highway what? what? <laughs> and Town Highway 1 South is supposed to be a stop sign. It is a stop sign. It's it's Town Highway 1. And, well, let me just make sure I've got the right one. That's right. Oh, no, I'm in the wrong. No, 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 that's right, that's right. That's, that's against corners, yeah, it's Town Highway 1. Town Highway 1, and this is Town Highway 2? Uh, no, this is Town Highway 3. Where's Town Highway 2? Town Highway 2 is, is where one the one stop sign one. is. Highway 1 should be County Road. Well, she says it's Kent Hill Road. No, that's State Highway 1. Town oh, Highway okay. 1. Oh, okay. We don't need to work it out tonight. No. We'll figure that out. Actually, later. one goes all the way up County Road, turns right, and yeah. goes so we down should Kent Hill. Discuss more and then have at the next meeting a, a, draft, ordinance. a draft ordinance change. And, okay. and I think the draft ordinance change should include putting in road names throughout the ordinance. I do too. Because it really makes it read so much better. Well, I mean, the, the normal people don't know what it means. Exactly. There's no highway and it won't be hard because there's this draft from the last select board. Oh, can you send me that? I can send it to you. And I, oh, yeah, okay. So no, I also have a spreadsheet where I cross-referenced yeah. all the Action was not reflected um, in the ordinance. So, so I can send that to yeah. you, too. Okay. 
So we found Town, Town Highway 2, and it's a different intersection. It's where um, Worcester Road comes into County Road. Can I just say one thing about naming? Um, Last I know, on um, our town highway ordinance, it listed the beginning of the road, Bliss Pond Road, off of the county road, and it just continues and in the description. It has Bliss Pond Road, and you want to know about this? Fowler, Fowler road, Lightning Ridge. Road, and Lightning Ridge, all yeah. as one road. 46. Yeah. yeah. And so, I, you know, maybe now if you're doing this big revision, maybe you can cut them off. Well, the, I, mean, I don't know that we could do that. I mean, that might be the that, that might be the state. That's state's. listed as one road with one highway number, mm -hmm. but they all have different speed limits. They're different segments. There's like six different segments on that highway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always found that to be odd. It's the whole thing is a little strange. <laughs> I think it has to do with funding, which ones they uh, that, how the state. Well, they're all class three. It's not even that old. It was done in. Okay. Uh, I don't know that. We can send it to our, you know, advisory committee. All right. Can we, yeah, can we save that for a separate? So we have a plan for ordinance revisions for our next meeting. Correct. Excellent. And uh, just to confirm, it sounds like we have some uh, consensus on modifying the speed limit. Or no. No. Sorry. Okay. But I can be out on it. Yes. Can I have a vote on it? Uh, we're not right now. Uh, not until we have a draft uh, ordinance. You know what say go on for two or three years? I mean, this is this is stupid. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna vote on thin air, Doug. We gotta vote on a, on a draft ordinance that is, uh, and we're gonna have the that in two weeks. The only way I see this getting done is go to vote. Oh, that, that's ridiculous, Doug. Um, no, we're going to get it done. I'm sick of guys going by. When Ann goes to the barn, if they're trying Doug, to... Doug, Doug, I'm registering your... We've change, been here the already the late enough, Doug. Change contact. I'm going to cut you off. We've got other business that we got to take up. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Yeah, I do, too. Um... <laughs> uh, uh, Curtis Bond Dam Rehabilitation Project. Uh, so we've got the update on progress um, and then uh, possible accepting of the Curtis Bond Dam Association. Yeah, we don't, association. Have, a, we don't no. have a donation check. Uh, we don't. No. I, w I wanted to, to be in just in case. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Were you thinking the second half of the loan? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'll nudge them. That, that'd be good. Okay. And then, yeah, we should talk about what the number needs yeah. to be. Yeah. Oh, you thought we didn't need it yet? Well, we're, we're at the tail end. This is we're the last getting phase. getting the tail end. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the bond, the bond is completely drawn upon, and okay. so we're now down to our own funds. Okay. As I, I said, we have, we'll have 1.3 million left. Um, you know, we have another tax installment, installment coming, but we, we're going to owe the school district another 1.7. Yeah, you know, it's getting tight. Yeah. Uh, reports. Um, I don't think we have much from uh, Tegan. She was going to hand off uh, potential reports uh, to Barbara, but is there any other updates? No, from Tegan the... doesn't have any other report. Okay. Um, the only thing that we had to just get feedback from the select board was two things and they're related. One is the town hall acoustics mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you saw the, it's not really uh, a, the, the results of, but it's just a report of mm -hmm. the responses we got from people who do attend meetings here regularly. Mm -hmm. And I suppose the overall result is that most people, it's not that big of an issue. There were only a few people who, who it was an issue for. But then, after I got all these results, we had our meet and greet here. Yeah. <laughs> and that got a lot more verbal responses than the written responses, which people were really complaining about the noise in here the night of our town 
our town officials meet and greet, and you guys experienced it. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where you stand with us wanting to pursue acoustical work or, or not. I have very good hearing, but I have poor selectivity. So when it comes to a very noisy room, I have trouble hearing a conversation that's right next to me. Mm -hmm. But I can hear, you know, anything outside. So it's one of those things that people are more, you know, to others. I don't know how you deal. You go into a bar, you can't talk either. At least I can't. You know, so I don't know what to do about that. Yeah. I didn't think it was that bad at, at that particular day myself. Yeah. Um, well, do I understand that the, eventually the renovations to the upstairs are going to do something that will help the, with the acoustics? They're hoping that the grant, they don't have a, the grant yet, but they've applied for the grant. Yeah. And they're hoping, they wrote in the grant, not only the insulation and the rewiring and the heating, but acoustic work. But that's upstairs. That doesn't So it won't affect down here? No, their grant is only for the upstairs. As a performance. No, term. I know, but I, I, I wondered if I'd heard that it would if affect the acoustics down here. But I think the answer is no. I think I, 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 I don't know specifically, but I, I, I don't see how the acoustics upstairs could help down. Yeah, here. I don't really either. Yeah. There's a lot of insulation between these two floors right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we were originally like talking about like kind of the low cost approaches, we were talking about like hanging the quilts and putting other things on and. Uh, frankly, I thought they were going to be a little bit more substantial than uh, mm -hmm. they are, uh, and those are hard surfaces, so that's not really yeah. doing anything. Right. Um, I, you know, I think it's going to be hard to stand up a budget for that particular item because I think the smaller meetings are fine, but I, I do think it pretty significantly limits our ability to use the space for things like the meet and greet, which yeah. right. you know, this is the perfect environment for having that kind of gathering. Um, uh, I, I would. I'd like to see, I guess, if there, if anybody has any ideas on like how we might be able to continue to like fill some of this wall space with like softer sound absorbing, sound absorbing materials yeah. or displays. That so I spoke with um, Barbara Weedon's daughter who does work like this and she gave me some suggestions and so uh, with your permission I'll go ahead and get some firm costs and can have, present that to you in two weeks if you'd like. Yeah, that uh, I'm also wondering if it's worth looking at. Yeah, yeah. I know a couple of people who are really into really nice quilting uh, activities who have connections to the Calis area. It'd be interesting to see if they'd be willing to maybe do something uh, on donation or as a pro side project or something There's like a that. Fair amount of wall space. There's yeah. a lot of wall space over there. What you could do is put some foam or some really absorbent stuff up behind oh. the quilt, then you wouldn't see it. Right. So, so what she recommended is a really dense foam, yeah. and she told me exactly what it is. It's not just like foam that you would cover your kitchen seats with. It's a really dense foam, but it's not real expensive. I looked on Amazon, and I think like a, a four foot by eight foot panel or something, two inches thick, is like $35. Mm -hmm. And then you can either cover it with a fabric or um, a canvas, and then we could get different callous artists to paint on the canvas to create mm -hmm. pieces of artwork. But quite frankly, some of these things, like even the maps, could hang on the foam. Right. So it's not we're not losing the wall space. We're just adding a, a what she kept referring to as a very dense foam, mm -hmm. and then you can hang things on it or put artwork on it. So I can come back in two weeks with a real firm number, well, a, a good number. Okay. No. Okay. That that sounds definitely worthwhile. Do you do we think that addressing the room would make it easier for people on Zoom to hear, or is that a microphone issue? Because it's very difficult to participate in a meeting by Zoom. You you can't hear. Um, and, and that was a, a number of people mentioned that, and so I do think that you bring up a really good point that we might need to invest in a few other microphones to go on tables or around the room. Um, and I'm not a sound engineer, but somebody who responded was it Gary Root who said he's a sound engineer. I could uh -huh. tap in on him and see what he recommends. There was somebody who responded here, so I could find out. He's a I wonder if Owl sells. <laughs> or has a capacity to have secondary mics. Mm -hmm. So there might be a really cheap mm -hmm. 
solution. Yeah. I also haven't ever watched any of the Orca ones. I wonder what it could do, like what the Orca audio is like in comparison to oh, yeah, uh, good point. that. Mm -hmm. I haven't attended any of the uh, meetings via Zoom, so I wouldn't be a good litmus test, but like, I think anybody else has uh, attended via Zoom and has the time to dig up an Orca video and just to mm -hmm. see what the mm -hmm. experience is yeah. might be telling. Okay. Um, oh, no, I lost the agenda. Uh, thanks, Barbara. Uh, Kari, do you so, have any other? Yeah, so finance report, I talked about the cash situation yeah. on the budget side. You know, there's a few line items that we're going to be monitoring pretty closely. One of the things I realized in doing this is that we don't, we, we do, do a fair amount of work with these grant and aid projects, which are um, state funded and they're not, they don't pick the projects until the spring. So they come well after the budget is set. So there are certain things in that are associated with those projects that um, drive certain lines in the budget, but then we get reimbursed for them. Mm -hmm. So like erosion stone, we actually don't really buy any erosion stone for our own purposes, but, but the state requires them for the, the segments that, that, that we do in this grand date. So that, um, it, I was talking with Toby about how could we, could we try to figure out how to incorporate those better into the budget, and so we'll continue that conversation. Mm -hmm. it, it, it nets out, I think, it's, it's definitely beneficial for the town, but it's just not reflected in our budget. Uh, yeah, that was it. Um, one of the things I, before I wrap up, I, I told John Stafford called me this morning and said to please express to the select board that they think Bill is a real asset um, and has done just a fabulous job uh, mowing this summer. And um, I forgot to mention that earlier. Um, so and I, I, I concur. I think Bill's, Bill's been a, a great addition to the team. Thank you very much. That is really painstaking work. Uh, 10 hours a day in the mower with your head cocked <laughs> and paying close attention to what's going on on the roadside and on the road at the same time. Mm. Thank, you. Thank you. Thanks, Corey. Um, uh, uh, should the uh, Callis uh, situation, uh, well, so uh, we have an option for all of the horses um, and, yeah. and an option for uh, the relocation of all of the horses that are moving moving towards that um, so we're still working on um, firming up a couple of details um, but uh, uh, there's been some real progress made uh, on that front um, so and the that's, options will Will that be at no cost to the town? That's uh, correct. There's a bit of a transportation question. Um, originally, we were thinking that that, that would not uh, uh, play into uh, the town's costs. Uh, we, we might have to uh, pull together a couple of resources um, to, to make it work. Um, um, but yeah, it, it does, does sound like that's the direction we're going. Very cost mitigated Good and great right for the horses, too. Thank you. Uh, and I have a notice for you. Um, that's it. Um, with that, uh, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, aye. aye. aye.